Hey guys, what's up? My name is Kaysem and I am here to talk to you guys about how to get some of the fundamentals of form when we're talking about drawing the head. So today I'm going to show you guys the easiest way to draw the head and we'll be looking at it from the basic simple shapes all the way to talking about the jaw and how to draw heads from different angles. If it's your first time here, my name is Kaysem. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, anatomy, gesture, figure drawing, perspective, all of that stuff. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castle so if you guys are interested in some free education, you're looking to just hang out on the stream, make sure you follow, subscribe and all of that stuff. And with that being said, let's get this one started. There you go. Sheesh. Okay. So that was my little, uh, that was my little YouTube intro. Um, but with that being said, I want to talk a little bit more about what we're actually doing today. So that way you guys who maybe are following along, which by the way, if you do want to follow along, I should, I should mention this, um, make sure you go to the discord channel right here and you go in here and you grab this one right here. This is the worksheet that we're working on today. And thank you for the sub. And also, uh, make sure you grab this resource right here. This is a cheat sheet that I made, uh, which will go over some of the basic fundamentals of the head. We'll be talking about the skeletal anatomy today a little bit, the general proportions form, as well as some of the muscular changes or muscular proportions and stuff too. So make sure you grab this sheet. Today, again, will be more of a tutorial stream, not necessarily like a, hey, watch me draw expressions kind of stream. So if you guys do want to follow along, if maybe you're struggling with drawing heads or you just want to level up drawing heads, highly encourage you guys join in for today's stream. So uh, with that being said, though, let me go play some music and let's get this one started. Thank you for the for the sub Nova. Yeah. You've, uh, you've upgraded to the white Shiba badge. I don't even remember what the colors are. I think, I think the three month Shiba is the black Shiba white Shiba is, um, six months. And then I think there's a red Shiba or a gold Shiba, which is nine months. I think thank you for all you do. You're doing awesome things. Thank you. Thank you. Sessa. Appreciate that. Sessa. Is it Sessa or Sessa? I'm sorry if I'm like butchering your name. I just keep saying the wrong name. <laughs> <laughs> um all right you thought the second picture was i show speed please this is this is like this is like i show riz this guy's this guy's got the riz look at the proportions the bone structure the 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 hair damn the tattoo on the back of the ear Whew. All right, but let's talk a little bit about heads today. And I wanted to start off actually, but just going over some of the basics uh, before we jump into talking about drawing all the details. Now, I kind of already did a rough sketch earlier today on stream um, or before stream, just because I wanted to warm up and stuff. Um, but one of the first things I always want to talk about when it comes to drawing the head is that one of the easiest things you can do, especially if you're struggling with drawing heads, is I want you guys to start visualizing the head not as a circle and you know with a triangle and all of that stuff um a triangle for the jaw but instead i want you guys to focus on imagining the forms as 3d shapes now there's a lot of ways you can do this um one of the ways i'm gonna show you guys right now is to just draw your head as a cube right so we're going to kind of lay out here this is not going to be matching the reference at all but i just kind of wanted to show you um kind of how that looks like right so imagine imagine the head as a cube Maybe we'll liquefy it a little bit here to kind of push it out. Um, but this is kind of an easy technique you can do, right? You have here, this is going to be the front side of the face uh, this way. So kind of going this way, front, front side. And then you have here kind of that side plane, okay? Now this, again, it's just a basic bare bones. You don't actually have to draw heads like this. But if you're, if you're going to do studies and stuff, this can be a really great way to start visualizing the head and all the structure that is going in it. Uh, let me go ahead here and maybe put like a little plus sign. There you go. Okay. So it's kind of like basic structure of a head just for general volume. This is not, again, you can do a lot with this, uh, but another way that you can probably draw the head is you can also do, let me see here again, there's multiple ways, right? So there's no like right or wrong way to draw a head. Uh, I just want to remind you guys that, but you know, the more you start thinking about form and, and thinking about the head, not as just uh, Hey, draw a circle, draw a line in the middle and then draw a triangle like this. 
which is how I used to draw heads back when I was uh, reading those Christopher Hart how to draw manga books which I'm sure some of you guys know what I'm talking about. This is how I used to draw heads. I used to think this is how you draw a head. You just draw a circle, you draw a triangle, and then you go this way. You want to do a head in profile, you draw a head, draw a triangle. And this is how I always drew heads. The problem with this is um, the moment you want to start drawing your heads at different angles, you're going to start to have a little bit of confusion because the head is not just a circle and a flat triangle, right? So instead, if you want to do a method that is similar to this approach, um, what I would recommend, so let me just put a big fat X here. Don't do this. This is that the, the typical YouTuber, don't do this, do this instead. Um, but <laughs> let me show you guys another variation of something that you can do. Uh, so that way you can kind of see how just thinking about the form will do a whole lot, right? So instead of doing kind of these these uh, rounder shapes or just these flat shapes, instead you can even think about drawing the head as a round form, right? So thinking about it as a sphere can be really helpful as well. Uh, let me go like this. And then let's just kind of keep that same energy here. So here we're gonna kind of add that roundness, kind of that circumference, right? Maybe let's, let's uh, lower the opacity a little bit on the backside there kind of bringing in that that form right here for the center line and then here we'll chop out and taper the head a little bit so we'll chop out that sphere and we'll talk a little bit about uh, tapering and stuff late, later on and then here I'm going to kind of draw in this plane that is going to be comprised of three uh, uh, two side planes and then one front plane there and so already this feels a little bit more structured right it's got some more form you can add more things here to kind of give it more form. So here's like maybe the, the, the cheekbones and then here's maybe the, the ears and the eyes are going to go here like this. And so these things already start to build structure um, and give you a little bit more to work with than just using uh, a simple flat shape, right? So these are the ones you want to try to do or some variation of this. Again, I'm not saying you have to do these like this. Um, but I think overall the point I want to make is form is good. Make sure you understand form, understand volume. 3D is good. Okay. 2D is bad. If we're talking anime, I don't usually like 3D anime, but in this case, 3D is very good. Um, it's given Loomis. Yeah. So again, Loomis is another variation of, um, one of these head structures. I think, uh, Bridgman also has one. Riley also has one. KSM has one, you know what I'm saying? So I think the whole point about all of this is um, think start start to think more about the planes here. So 2D, or let's just say flat face. No flat face. No, don't do it. Don't do it, man. Okay, so that's going to be the basic notes right there um, for the head. And this is just kind of to, to kind of get us started with um with this structure that we have here let me actually move this head um over here to the to the left so i'm gonna go ahead and let's do hold on i got spam i got a spam call Ugh. or at least wild spam calls um thank you for the follows by the way i spy a birdie appreciate that also we got a follow from valstein uh thank you for the follow valstein uh dow doer thank you for the follow von's killer as well uh, and everybody, everybody else here today, welcome in. And don't worry, yeah, if you guys are watching live right now and you're like, man, I wish I could stay and follow along, but I got work to do or something, uh, no worries. Um, again, I'll be uploading these as a VODs over to YouTube. And also, I would love it if you guys could support me over on YouTube over there um, because I'm trying to get more active over there on YouTube and hopefully build another kind of educational community over there that rivals those of um of the art school industry maybe even proco but proco is too good um but anyways let's go ahead now and move over to doing some demos because we're going to actually do um some some drawings for sure so let me just move these over to the side uh, and this is kind of the no flat face little advice tips i would give here some general advice uh let's go talk a little bit now about the actual structure of the head and I'm going to use this one as a little bit of a demo because um, I already kind of drew the head earlier. So let's go ahead here and let's talk a little bit about the structure of the head. So let's say for this uh, for this girl here, right, we're going to kind of lay out 
uh, a general kind of box. Okay. And from this general box, what I like to do, and I'll show you guys in a bit, is first of all, let's kind of establish the side plane here. All right. And again, once you start getting better at it and getting comfortable at drawing heads your own way, you don't got to draw boxes. Okay. Though, if you do, for example, do some animation or whatever, sometimes drawing boxes for some simple dynamic poses can actually go a really long way for establishing perspective. So here's an example. Like, let's say we, we want to draw a character and they're kind of leaning, they're kind of leaning in. Maybe they're doing a little bit of a, like a skater move. So like they're a skater character, right? So kind of going in like this and having a little bit of that head shape can kind of establish some of that perspective. Um, I'm just trying to draw this from imagination here. So you can kind of see what I'm saying, right? Like using that, using that head shape can really help um, establish some, some basic forms, but you don't have to always draw a head uh, or a cube. You don't got to draw a sphere. You can draw whatever technique allows you to start visualizing these forms more three-dimensionally. Um, and thank you for the follows. Iron Chow Chow and Solinary. Appreciate that. And Ruby1111. Uh, and Trippy Vibes Gal. Appreciate you guys all coming in here today. Welcome in. Uh, hopefully you guys are doing well. I used to think you were ref referring to Procreate whenever you mentioned Proco. Oh, really? <laughs> no, no, no. I was talking about, I was talking about Head Honcho Proco from YouTube. Okay, but let's talk a little bit about an easy way to break this up. Because let's say, for example, you're like, hey, Sam, I don't really see how the head can be represented as a cube. It doesn't even really look like a head. So here are some easy tips that you can do. Um, what I like to do is I like to find that halfway mark. So the one half mark right here. Um, this is, again, the head is facing this way, right? So this is going to be the front view. The head uh, front is here. So having that one half section there, and then what I like to do is I like to find the kind of like roughly about two thirds and this two thirds right here, you can imagine if you chopped this out like so, okay, kind of just chop this out right here. Um, and then if you like, just, just literally just remove this chunk off of the head. Okay. So just went yoink. Let me take that, this chunk right here. If you took this chunk off of the head right here. Okay, this this little structure right there, um, this one right here, the big one, that's going to be kind of a good placement there for where the head's going to be. And we also have a good section there for where we can insert the neck. Because let me actually ask you guys in the chat real quick. Put an F in the chat if you've ever had difficulty in the, at some point in the past where you tried to draw your character and then you try to put the neck on the character and for some reason it looks a little wonky. You're kind of just like, man, how does the head connect to the neck? How does the neck connect to the body? It's all kind of confusing. Put an F in the chat if you've ever had that problem. Because if so, I will definitely show you guys a little bit about how we're going to be doing, um, how to kind of make that a little bit easier for yourself. Because uh, I think once you start to simplify the forms and understand how the neck works, you'll probably not have this issue as much. You might, you might still have the issue. But I think this is a good kind of place to start here. All right, so imagine this, this front form here. And again, this right here is about two thirds on this side right here. Okay. This is like two thirds. Okay, okay. So we got here our one third, our two thirds. We got our front view, side view, and all of that bells and whistles. All right. Damn, a lot of F's in the chat today. <laughs> um, a lot of F's in the chat today. All right, so we're moving that bottom third. And then let me show you guys a little bit more. So let's let's take this one a little bit further because you can actually do a lot more with this head um, to, to give him more of a likeness, right? So from here, let's actually go in now. And I'm going to do this one on a... Let's do this one on a new layer. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this one. And then let me actually also fix the perspective of this. So
Okay, so here what I'm going to do now is let's actually kind of draw in what that skull would look like um, if we were to, you know, draw the skull and stuff. And so the way that I'm always envisioning the skull, you can kind of imagine here is I'm always looking for some of the planes here that we can start to utilize. So we have here that frontal, um, that frontal bone area. The upper portion here is going to be mostly the parietal bone. That's going to be the upper section there of the skull. And we'll talk a little bit about skeletal anatomy in a bit. Don't worry too much. Um, don't worry too much about all the names and stuff because I think sometimes that confuses people. When people when people hear anatomy, they're like, "Oh man, Kasem, do I have to learn all the names and all of this and that?" Like, no, no, no. You don't. You don't have to. Though I think it does help to remember some of these things. Um, we have here in the back side of the head, this is going to be the occipital. I always forget. I think it's occipital bone. And then you have here the temporal on the side. So I think those are going to be like the parietal, temporal, frontal, occipital. Yeah, I think those are the those are the anatomy of the, the, the skull there uh, for the dome. But then here, we're going to kind of find that halfway mark. Let's see where we want to place the uh, the eye socket there. And again, this is just me establishing a little bit of that skull, right? So uh, we're not going to talk too much about the anatomy of the skull today, unless you guys really want me to. Do you guys want me to talk about the skull anatomy? Let me know in the chat if you guys want me to talk about it, because if so, I'll give you guys the full, <laughs> I'll give you guys the full juice today. No holding back, you know? Uh, where's the anatomy cheat sheet? It's on the Discord channel. It's, it's literally on the Discord channel, guys. Um, all of the sheets that I give you guys, you can always find them on the Discord channel whenever I'm live out here. Um, oh, you're saying what I remember. You're testing if I know it. Yeah, I remember it. Don't worry. I literally have to draw. I drew, I think, two weeks ago. I was drawing so many skulls for work. Oh, man. I was like, the whole week, I was just drawing skulls nonstop. I was like, yo... People are like, do you really have to learn how to draw skulls? <laughs> I'm like, uh, it helps for sure. Um, how is work? Work is good. Work is really good, actually. I've been I've been there for a bit of time now, and it's been um, it's been solid, uh, to say the least. Uh, but let's go ahead here. Let's kind of lay out some of the other structure of the skull. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the anatomy of the skull. All right, so. Obviously, there's going to be the eye socket there and all of that stuff. But I would actually say some of the main components of the skull are going to be stuff like the um, the ridge here, which is known as the zygomatic bone. I would probably say this is probably one of the more important things. Uh, the zygomatic bone is a very important bone. It's basically what makes the cheekbone, uh, but it also really creates a nice shape for the um for the anatomy of the head and allows you to kind of visualize the planes a little bit better um so the, so that's a zygomatic there and we haven't drawn a head in in front view yet as a skull so keep that in mind but yeah um the zygomatic yeah the zygomatic process goes all the way right here connects to this portion which i believe is the maxilla mandible maxilla yeah so we have here all of that um let's kind of lay in some some bony bones here uh and then here you have um the portion of the teeth so i'm just gonna kind of lay out some some teeth here i think each each section should have about eight one two three four five six seven so let's just kind of do it like that um and then here we have the what is this called the mandible here and again this is not like super eh, it's, it's close close enough to to what you need to remember <laughs> one two three four five six seven eight there you go And then we'll go down, down. There you go. That's good enough. Um, 
I memorized all the bones of the head 10 years ago. I remember like four of them. Yeah, you don't need to. Yeah, there's, it's, there's so many bones. I think if there's any just to remember, I think the biggest ones is probably uh, mandible, zygomatic. Uh, that's it. Just <laughs> just those two, uh, to be honest. Or, or just like, and when I say remember, I mean like remember how they work. I think just knowing the names doesn't actually help you out too much. Um, but yeah. Hey, I'm new here. Quick question. Hold on, wait, wait. Oh, the chat's moving crazy fast. Um, let's see here. Quick question. How did you transition from sophomore and junior character art, uh, professional schooling, self-taught? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm mostly self-taught. I, I basically was teaching myself how to draw again uh, about two years ago when, when I was trying to get back into drawing after a six-year hiatus. And I was doing that in between working. So I, like, before in the, like before going to work in the mornings, I would draw for about two hours. Um, I would draw a little bit at the end of work and stuff, and then I would kind of rinse and repeat that process of just just uh, studying, and then eventually after two years, I was able to, or after after a year about self studying, I quit my job to do more freelance work and pursue all that stuff, uh, and then a year after that, I was doing more industry work for bigger studios um, like Powerhouse and stuff. Um, it's it's more fun learning this way. Oh, that's great to hear. Hi, Sunny. Um, that's that's actually really great to hear, uh, but okay. So here we have here the uh, the skull. Ta-da! See, it's not too bad, right? Okay, let me let me go label some of these things for you guys, and so that way, for those of you who are um, trying to really learn all the names and stuff, why not? Let me go ahead and do that. So first of all, the thing I want to call out to is pay attention here to the angle of the head. So the head here isn't flat like a box, right? There's going to be some, some curves and all that stuff. And so I want you guys to pay attention to these rhythms. There's always going to be here uh, one, hold on, one, two, three, four. Okay, there you go. Um, hey, thank you for the, for the 12, the 12 months. I uh, really appreciate that modesty. That's crazy. I don't know. Did you, did you ever think you'd be hanging out here for a whole year? That's actually insane. Um, I just rushed in and got no vacation. Um, I don't think you missed a lot. I mean, it looks like we drew a lot, but I swear it's actually not that much. Right guys. For those of you who've been here, I feel like it's not, it's not been super, uh, super crazy. Uh, future Glenn, welcome in. Rabid, uh, Ravenclaw, Gigalva, welcome in as well. Hopefully you guys are doing uh, all right today. Uh, you're getting back into it yourself? Yeah, well, hopefully my streams are helpful. All I do is teach out here on, twi on Twitch. And so if you guys are looking for any educational stuff, um, I would say this is definitely this is definitely a good stream for that because all I cover is educational content. So yeah, but let me go ahead and actually... What's the best way to do this? I want to move this here and I want to like put this on a multiply layer. Yeah, there you go. So that way you can kind of see it a little bit and you can kind of see the the box here that we drew earlier, right? Uh, but now what I'm going to do is I'm going to label, I'm going to label some of these things for you guys, some of these terms. For those of you guys who maybe are looking for a little bit of, um, a little bit more, you know, you're kind of like, hey, Sam, not only do I want to know the, um, not only do I want to know the general stuff, I want to know the anatomy as well. Okay, I got you covered. So this right here, nasal bone, um, it's going to be the bridge there over the nose. Uh, this right here is going to be frontal bone, or frontal, yeah, frontal bone. Uh, this right here up top is parietal, per, pari, pariah, how do I spell that, parietal? I'm sorry if I spell it wrong, parietal, like that, probably. Um, then you're going to have here the occipital in the back. That's going to basically insert, um, it's going to help insert the spine onto the skull. Uh, ossip, ossipital, ossipital. Mm. Okay. My spelling is off. Okay. Just, just take, take, take the, take the sound temporal, uh, temporal. And the cheekbone here is going to be the, uh, zygomatic. Uh, then here you have the maxilla and then the jaw is the mandible. Okay. 
And if there's any, you have to remember. If there's any that I want you guys to definitely remember, it's going to be this one right here. And this one right here. If you know these two, you're pretty much good. That's like, those are the main ones. Everything else, just focus on the abstraction. Um, but learning the zygomatic bone and the mandible are going to actually be very valuable because they're going to be the ones that are prominent on the face. Like you will clearly see the jaw, right? The jaw is going to be very important and learning how the jaw works. Uh, but then the zygomatic is also very important because it'll also help dictate some of the shape and form of the face too. Um, oh, there's an, there's an ad here. Uh, guys, by the way, I do run ads. If you're watching live on Twitch right now, I do watch, I do play ads on my stream every hour. Uh, one's running right about now. So thank you again for those of you who are here uh, watching. And I hope to see you guys after the ad break. How's it going, Molly? The tempura. Yeah, the good old tempura bone. It's a nice skull. Thank you. Kaysen, when he can finally do anatomy again, dude, I feel, I feel so good. I love doing anatomy. I feel like for those of you guys who just found me recently and you're just like, oh, Kaysen, you do a lot of expressions and stuff. Like, no, no, no. On Twitch, I am, I, I was known <laughs> for, for the anatomy. That was like my, that was my bread and butter. That's what I, that's what I love to do, anatomy. Um, but anyways, so we've drawn here the, the anatomy. We've got here the, uh, the general structure of the head. Let me just kind of move things. Uh, there's so many things I've already drawn in just like one, uh, in such a short amount of a time here. Let me just put all these like little notes and stuff. I'm going to compile these later. So earlier, somebody asked if you could screenshot it. I mean, you could you could screenshot it and stuff, uh, but I will actually be uploading uh, the YouTube video of this so you guys can just check it out on YouTube. And then I will also probably make a cheat sheet with all these notes that you guys can uh, go ahead and download as well. So, okay, but there you go. So we have here the thirds, proportions, all of that stuff. Um, Let's actually go in now and let's draw out a head. I think this will be a good time to actually draw something out here. So let me go find that skull and I'm going to use that skull here now as a reference for you guys. Okay. Oh, and then let me also do, oh, I should, I should have, hmm. let me do like this. Okay, so if there's anything else to remember, it's going to be this thing right here. One, two, three, and then let me erase this. Uh, four. So if there's anything to remember, it's the stuff in yellow. Okay, everything else in blue, that's just brownie points. If you just want to remember these other names and stuff, okay, sure, go for it. Um, but I would say the, the main stuff, the main key things are going to be the, the stuff in yellow which I know might be a little hard to see right now on stream. Okay, but let's go in here and let's actually draw out the head now. So let me go boom, boom, boom. I'm gonna group all these up because there's so much going on here. <laughs> one, uh, one, two, three, four, group. Okay. Okay, let's go ahead and do this one. Um, did you did did go all digital from the start? I don't want to limit myself, but I I prefer it. Um, I mean, you can. I I would I honestly recommend you do both. I think I think that it doesn't hurt to do, um, to do both traditional and digital. I think if anything, doing both on, um, as part of your routine is actually probably more beneficial than just sticking to sticking to digital and there's a lot of reasons why but here's one example of why practicing both can be helpful um you might not always have the option to draw digitally but i think drawing traditionally is always easy to do and so if you're ever like on the go and you want to make sure that your drawing skills are not um are not you know rusty when you do traditional i think it's just good to practice i don't draw traditional as often as i like to anymore but i still do it i still have a sketchbook and everything you know, and hey, thank you for the follows, guys. Celeste, um, Kaxuri, Pomono, 
um, future Glenn and everybody else coming in here. I hope you guys enjoy uh, today's stream so far. I do run ads on my stream earlier, so thank you, thank you guys for those of you who are still back here from the ad break. Okay, but let's kind of go in here. I'm going to talk about the anatomy of the neck in a bit. Maybe we'll do it with this guy because I think he has more of a prominent neck. Um, but for this one, for now, I'm just going to I'm just going to go ahead and talk a little roughly about the neck. So for those of you guys who maybe struggle with how figuring out how the how to place the neck, um, an easy way to think about it is that the, the spine actually connects at about halfway of the dome here of that skull. So it's roughly about right here, inserts into that occipital bone there. But halfway there, you can kind of just go like this. Remember that the neck also curves because the spine, uh, the spine goes like this, like this, and like this. Um, this is this is facing this way. So there is going to be a little bit of a curve there, and you can kind of see with this model reference, right? There's a little bit of a curve like that. Um, so it's not completely straight, right? It's not like a fully straight thing. But here's the spine going this way. And then from there, I just take a portion going back here, same distance going back this way. But also remember that there's a little bit of a taper there. So we're going to add a little bit of a taper for the neck um, and that should be good to go. We're not going to talk about anatomy just yet. I'll talk about the muscular anatomy of the face, maybe with this guy, um, because I think there's just so much more there. So for this one, we'll focus on just the, the overall shape. OK, but now I'm just going to take that skull that I drew and we're just going to kind of roughly lay out where I want the face to be. Now, obviously, you know, she is more uh, feminine. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to soften out that jaw there. Uh, so some kind of quick tips there here is that when you're drawing male versus females, um, oftentimes there are a few there are a few anatomical differences, actually, that you'll notice um, the more you study. So this is not even like a, this is more of a generalization, but it's. It applies for a lot of um, a lot of faces. So oftentimes the um, oftentimes the female skull will actually have a much more obtuse um, jawline, so it kind of rounds out a little bit more uh, versus the male skull, which is going to be a little bit sharper and a little bit more box-like towards the lower portion of the jaw. There, other things to note about the female uh, the female skull is that it tends to be a little bit flatter here, meaning that the, for example, the frontal bone or this kind of round portion of the forehead here is going to be a little bit flatter. Whereas with the male skull, you can kind of see here how it protrudes out a little bit more. There's a bit more of a sharpness there to the forehead, right? So subtle things like that can definitely make a difference. Um, other things to note as well are going to be the um, the jaw is going to be, uh, the chin's going to be a little bit smaller with female heads as well too. Um, but hey, thank you for the follows, guys. Delphic Moth, uh, Roy Draws, and everybody else coming in here. Mm, let's see here. I have a lot of practice with traditional. It's been super difficult for me to adapt to digital. And I think that's okay. That happens. I think like any, like any medium, right? Like any new medium that you're trying to learn, it takes a little bit of time and practice. But I do think that, you know, once you kind of get the hang of things and, and figure, out, uh, figure out how some of the basic tools work, I actually think you'll be okay. I used to struggle all the time with digital stuff and I used to struggle with different programs, right? Like just because you figured out how, how procreate works or Photoshop works, doesn't mean you're going to get learning how to use CSP right away for some people. Yes, but sometimes that's not the case. Um, and yeah, I'm, I am using an Apple pencil. Can you explain the jawline again? Cause I didn't understand. Oh yeah, yeah, sure. So, okay. So here's the thing about the jawline. So maybe I didn't clarify it earlier, uh, but also guys feel free to ask uh, questions. If you have any questions or anything, um, again, uh, I I'm, I'm here to help you guys out. I'm not just here to randomly draw skulls for myself. You know, I want to try to help you guys out as much as I can. So the more you guys ask, the better off um, the better off everybody will be too. Cause if, if you're, if you're, if you're confused about something, there's probably a good chance someone else is too. Um, so talking about the jaw again, so there's a couple changes. Basically I was, what I was referring to was there are a couple slight changes and differences in the proportion of the skull for males versus females. Again, this is a generalization. So keep this in mind. There's going to be some females with different, you know, male like jaws or whatever, but the main thing I want to call out here is uh, when you're talking about a male versus female jaw, oftentimes the female jaw will be a little bit rounder and kind of become more obtuse. So it kind of widens out a bit and fans out this way. 
But when you take a look at the male jaw, this guy's jaw right here, notice how it's much kind of much more sharper and at an angle here. So when you compare the two, this one has a wider angle, a wider, a wider opening than uh, this one right here. So if I actually took this one right here and I moved it against this one, look at the difference there. You see that? So this is, this is what I'm talking about, male versus female. You'll kind of see these type of things happening uh, with the jawline. And this, this is a skeletal uh, proportion difference. Another proportion difference you'll see is the flatness of the skull as well, too. So generally, females will have a much more uh, rounder and flatter front side there with the frontal bone and kind of the curve there of the face. Whereas with males, you'll sometimes see a larger protrusion there of the brow ridge. Yeah. Is that, is that, is that, does that make sense? So hopefully that answers your question there about the difference between male and female. Um, maybe I'll do a, do I got room here? Okay. I'll do it after I'll, I'll, I'll do a diagram where I do like male versus female and stuff. Um, can you talk about the most common mistakes you see in, in beginner artists? I think it's this, this is kind of what we talked about earlier today. I think, I think the, the most common thing I see with a lot of beginner artists and stuff that even I, I had struggled with a lot at the beginning was not realizing that the head and everything you draw is actually 3d and has, has form has 3d volume. And so when I first used to draw faces, when I was learning those, how to draw manga books and stuff, I used to draw all my heads really flat, right? I would do a circle triangle, this, and it shows when you look at someone's art, you can tell when they're not thinking about the form because it feels really flat. But the moment you start to realize that form, uh, that faces have volume, that characters have volume, it'll be actually a lot easier. And you can still use a technique like this, but you can also apply a lot more volume to it by adding in stuff like the roundness, right? Chopping in the forms here, seeing kind of that, the shape of the jaw, right? I would say those are one of the probably one of the more common mistakes that I see among um, among beginner artists and stuff. But let's kind of continue here. So we have that skull. Let's kind of fill it in with a few of the forms. And I'll talk a little bit about proportions as well, too. So um, going back here, we're going to find that halfway mark of the head. And I like to put a little bit of an angle because the ears kind of sit back at an angle. They kind of so here's like the halfway mark of the head here like this. Um, but the ears kind of they kind of go in at an angle from that jaw and kind of go this way. So I always like to place the ears a little bit further back just to kind of give some, uh, some, some bit of room there. So I'm going to kind of find that area there. And then here, before we jump into placing in all the forms, I'm going to lay out some general proportions. So I like to have the brows, the nose and the chin roughly about the same distance apart. Um, about a third. And again, these are just generalizations that you can always change and stuff. But I would say a good place to start proportionally is going to be doing something like this. Um, hey, thanks for the thanks for the for the resub. Luther, appreciate the primer out here. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and thank you, everybody, for coming in today. Appreciate all the follows. Punch Coco and all of that stuff. Working other stuff. Virtually your record stream so I can watch uh, Miss Parts recorded. Yeah, I, I will. I will do that. And I, I also will be uploading them to YouTube. So if you guys didn't know, I have a YouTube channel starting this Saturday. I'll be uploading roughly about two to four videos a week. So if you guys like what you're seeing here, um, I'll be uh, having those videos over there, all my VODs and stuff onto YouTube. So that way, hopefully I can help more people and stuff. But also because um, Twitch, Twitch basically gets rid of VODs after about... Um, I think Twitch gets rid of VODs after about two months. And I used to do this thing where subscribers basically get access to the VODs. But I think right now, um, I just want to upload the VODs to YouTube and then we'll figure out what to do from there. So yeah, you can, you can check all that stuff out. But anyways, let's go back here with the face. So now we have here the general outline. Um, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to, I'm going to kind of start drawing in the features for this girl here, um, that we have, um, and you can kind of see here how I'm using that skeletal anatomy um, to kind of help dictate where I want to place all these features.
So just kind of placing in the eyes, um, the eyelid here. And let me actually lower her eyes a little bit. And then I'll talk about a few more kind of tips and tricks. Um, a tip, a few tips and tricks that you guys can utilize as well. So when it comes to drawing the face um, at an angle here, um, at, like in profile, uh, sometimes I see a, a common mistake with, uh, with beginner artists is they do this thing where I'll show you guys really quick. Um, a lot of beginner artists will do this thing where if let's say you're drawing an eye, right? And you're drawing an eye inside of you like this. Um, sometimes I'll see, I'll see this where you draw the eye, you draw the pupil, you draw the lids, and then you have like your, you know, you got your eye here like this. Right now, the problem is when you're drawing an eye in inside view like this, the eye socket Okay, it actually goes in a little bit of at an angle, kind of like this. And so what's going on here isn't that the 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 eyelids are not actually the same level. Usually what happens here is that the lower eyelid kind of goes back a little bit more. And so you have here this kind of angle for the face. And you can kind of see here with her too. Notice how this front one is a little bit further up. It's very subtle, right? But this front one's a little bit further up here than this this back one. And so sometimes I'll see a lot of beginner artists will put like both of them the same, which is completely fine. Again, it's such a subtle thing, but the more things you know, the more things you can kind of observe, the more um, the more nuanced you can make things and really start pushing some of the realism. Because if you take a look at some of the differences between what makes a professional artist's work really good versus maybe some of someone who's maybe more amateur and stuff, a lot of the times it's the small details. It's the small little things that we that we as amateurs, you know, might not pay attention to right away, but as you start developing your skills, you're like, "Oh, okay. There's a little bit of this, changing a little bit of that, you know?" So it's very small subtle things. Um eyes and nose mostly. Yeah, so we'll talk a little bit about all of that stuff um for sure, hopefully. <laughs> But anyways, let's get the eyes in here. So we have all that. Let's get the nose in here as well. Um, let's see here. We'll do... So here I'm just going to fill out again. I'm just, I'm just following that skull drawing that we did earlier. So I'm taking the anatomy of the skull and I'm just filling in the rest of the proportions. Now, obviously, um, obviously, when you are drawing this yourself, you don't have to draw the skull every time and all of that stuff, right? I think that's that's up to your choice. Um, I don't draw the skull every time I draw a head. That would just take forever. But, you know, I'm trying to show you guys kind of how to, how the skull correlates to the rest of the face here. Did he just say we're amateurs? I'm saying in general as amateurs. Um, um, and uh, thank you for the follows too, by the way. The Dark Lord Doom, I am Zweta, Dopamine KW, uh, Punch Coco, and everybody else coming in here today. Hopefully you guys are having a good, good day so far. And um, out of curiosity, for those of you guys who who um, came across my stream today. How did you guys come across my channel? Uh, was it through recommended homepage? Um, I got rated or something. I don't know, you know, let me know. Let me know how, how you guys found my Was it through YouTube? That'd be cool if it was you guys found me through YouTube. You're like, Casey, I'm actually, I saw you on YouTube first, which is cool. You found me randomly. You just like clicked on a stream one day and you were like, yo, I'm going to check out, I'm going to check out this guy. <laughs> let me see what his dude's up to real quick. All right. Let me see here about this lips.
Okay. Uh, Twitch recommended it on the art channel. I uh, wanted to see something creative. Hit the discover button. Like your shirt and followed you. Like my shirt. Thank you. I'm, I've been getting a lot of compliments today about my shirt. I'm so, I'm so surprised. I didn't know this shirt would be such a hit. Uh, it was such an art stream. Uh, okay. Scrolled and recommended and saw you. Can't remember it was back in 2020. I know it's been some time, hasn't it? Uh, I don't, I'm interested in, in art, but I don't have the time for it. I'm a high school teacher. I'm here just to have fun. No worries. And you know, I completely understand. I think sometimes it's hard. Um, sometimes it's hard to, to find time to do, to do art. I get it. You know, as somebody who, as somebody who, who worked, who was working while trying to like do art again. And I had, I had like maybe an hour at best, maybe two hours. If I can, if I could really plan it out to draw, I totally understand what it feels like to, um, feel like you don't have any time for, for drawing and stuff. Okay. Let me just move some things around and then we'll get into the ears and then we'll get into maybe drawing out some of the, um, some of the hair and stuff as well too. Okay. Cool. Um, let's go in here and advertisement of Twitch on t-shirt. On Twitch t-shirt, yeah. Um, how long am I streaming for today? About uh two more hours, probably. Yeah. Shout out to the viewers from Turkey. Uh, let's see here. Thanks. How's it going, Gato? I'm doing well today. Yeah, we're doing we're doing a okay today. All right, so let's go put the ears in here. Um, the ears are just gonna kind of fit in on the back here. Again, we've kind of already laid out some of the structure there of the ear. I think she has, interestingly enough, some smaller smaller ears, but we'll kind of lay that in. And then something I want to call out too is um. You don't always have to draw the jaw. Um, sometimes stylistically, what I've seen artists do is they'll kind of go in here and they'll kind of uh, just denote the connection of the ear here. And then they'll soften out that line there for the jaw just to kind of show like, yeah, there's a connection, but it's not as prominent maybe as a male character's jaw might be, right? So you can go in and do something like that. Just to kind of give it a little bit, a little bit of softness there with the lines, um, and not have to, you know, show such a harsh jaw. There you go. Uh, but let's go ahead and do, let's do the ears real quick here. The inner portion of the ears curves, curves. And let me do another curve here. Yeah, this is how I draw my ears. Pretty stylized. Um, but hey, thank you for the follows. Uh, Schmick, Spinko, uh, a kid in midden, and everybody else coming in here. Oh, you got a puppy power redemption? Sure. Here's a puppy power. Here's my dog. But okay, you can kind of see here the before and after um, of the of the skull and stuff. It's pretty. It's pretty interesting. It's actually pretty wild when you compare how we drew the skull 
and all the general proportions as well, right? I saw you recommend it because of all the artists I follow is in live. Oh, okay. Well, I'm glad that you're, I'm glad that you stuck on Twitch and you were like, you know what? Let me try this new streamer today. Let me see what's up with them. And, um, now you're here. Uh, by the way, guys, if you guys are new here, welcome into the Kasem crew. My name is Kasem. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, clothing design, figure drawing, everything. And I also currently work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, right now, I'm prepping to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys are into some free art education, you guys like the dog who's sleeping over here, or you just are looking for a stream, um, looking for a stream to find, to watch, um, yeah, leave a follow and welcome in. Uh, what do I think of The Last of Us so far? I like it a lot. <laughs> I've, been, I've been making fan art of, of, uh, of The Last of Us. So th these are some drawings I did last stream. We did some drawings of Ellie. I was working on Ellie um, two streams ago. We did some fan art of Ellie. Ellie's really hard to draw. Um, so I haven't, I haven't finished her drawing her yet. But we did draw Joel um, the, past, the past couple streams. Um, thanks for the follows. Crew TV and also Ginger, Ginger B. Castlevania. Yeah, Castlevania is a really good, a really good show. Very well made. Very well produced. No complaints. Um, case of mastering, cat mastering the neck. Yeah, we we're gonna be talking about the neck today as well. So as you guys can see, we have a few references in the neck here, and I wanted to talk to you guys about it because I feel like sometimes we as you know. We as artists, you might struggle with trying to place the neck on the head. Like put an F in the chat if that's ever happened to you where you're drawing a character and you're just like, man, how does the head connect to the body and the neck and, and this and that? Like it's a little bit confusing. If you've ever had problems with that, put an F in the chat because today I will show you guys how to hopefully not have that problem as much. You might still have it in the future, but at least, at least you'll get an idea of how it works. And we kind of already talked about it a little bit uh, when I brought up to you guys about the, when I talked to you guys about the, the, how I, how I find the spine and all of that stuff. But okay, so we have here again, I'm gonna show you guys, here is the skull that we drew from over here earlier. I'm just mapping out all the forms placing in the areas for where I want the um, or I want the face to be and all of that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, I just draw in my features. Nothing too crazy. I would say hopefully not too crazy. And that's about it. That's about it for drawing the face. Uh, thank you for the fall of spider wick. Yeah, we draw the tube. It's a little bit angled. We'll probably do a few more next today too. Uh, Tiger Prime Kasem, do you do reviews of artwork? Sometimes I think I think I will be doing um, some of that eventually for sure. A lot of you guys have asked about that, so let me go ahead and move. I'm gonna I'm gonna put that skull away now, so it's not as crazy looking, not as messy looking. Um, but let's kind of go in here and let us now. Let us now go in and draw some hair. Let's have a little bit of fun switching away from anatomy and stuff. And let's draw some hair on this character because I think the hair is really cool. Um, let me do maybe like this. Okay. Okay, Sam, I'm good, but I want to get better. Can seem to get over the artistic hump. Would appreciate input. Ah, yes, the, the the plateau feeling, right? How many of you guys in the chat feel like you um you're in this plateau where you feel like you're drawing, you're putting in the work, you're trying to you're drawing a bunch, but for some reason you feel like your art is not improving. You feel like you're kind of stuck. Put an F in the chat if you're in if you're in that situation. 
How many of you guys are in an art plateau right now? All right, so for hair, um, really quick for hair, what I'm going to do here is I'm first going to find the overall silhouette of the hairstyle that I'm going to that I want to go for. So we're going to kind of go this way. I'm looking for, again, some shape language, and I'm not trying to get all the details in just yet because details will come later. The, the details will come after you have good form, right? It's like um, you want to make sure that your structures are good before you before you commit to anything too crazy. So I'm going to go in here. I'm just going to find that overall shape, the shape language that I'm looking for. And I think this is kind of what I want to go with. I think this is okay. Um, we'll start here with this. Let's go ahead and get rid of that, that um, the base of the skull there and actually fill it in with some form. And again, I'm just looking at overall shapes, looking at overall form and language and seeing how we can kind of use that to help guide some of the volume we're going to be moving in as well. Um, I'm doing this drawing with pen, but I just can't draw the mouth. Mouths are hard, 100%. I think... I think your your difficulty or your struggle with mouth is is not uncommon. Honestly, I could probably work on this mouth a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, mouths are mouths are usually hard. I they're such a weird weird part of the body. All right. You used to draw so freely back in the day, but recently I'm only critical in all my art. Yeah. So we, um, I've talked a little bit about, about how to deal with these kind of things, right? So how to deal with, um, how to deal with like feeling like you're plateauing with your art. So I guess we can do that while I'm, while I'm drawing hair. Cause I feel like the, this portion right here, you guys have seen me do this one a lot. So I'm going to assume you guys don't need me to do a hair tutorial today. Um, so let's just go and let's just go and talk about this dealing with this plateau. Um, haven't really been online for a long time. Don't think you remember me though. Terrafine. Oh yeah, I remember. I remember you. Um, let me think. I think you followed me last year, right? I, I have like a general idea for names and stuff, but yeah, I mean, there are a lot of people who come and go, who come and go on Twitch. So Sometimes it is like that. Um, when you're not teaching, how many layers do you usually use for a piece? I mean, at work, like maybe two, <laughs> like two layers. Um, I mean, it depends. It depends. But like generally speaking, I don't use a lot of layers because I don't know. I, I just I just don't think it's necessary. And if anything, it's just more of a hassle for me to keep track of more um, it's a hassle for me to keep track of more tabs and stuff. So, but yeah. Okay. So now here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go in here now and I'm going to start chopping out the volume of the hair that I, that I want. Right. So this is where you start taking those forms, um, that we've established earlier. And now we're going to say, Hey, you know what? Let's kind of break these things up. Let's kind of say this right here is going to be a general form going back um, back into the skull right here. There's going to be some more, maybe more volume going this way, right? So this is where we can really start establishing, um, a little bit more structure with the hair, but we're not yet committing to any crazy details. Notice here that I haven't drawn any individual strands for the hair. I'm still keeping the structure the same and I'm just overall focusing on grabbing volume. Um, Amateurs often do the, uh, it took you a few moments to draw a fine ear. Oh, for, for drawing ears. Yeah. Ears are, ears are going to be tough around boot camp time. Oh yeah. We're going to be doing a new boot camp, uh, starting next week, actually. So if you guys enjoyed the boot camps and stuff that I did last year, all the tutorial stuff, um, it's going to be starting again next week. So make sure you join the discord channel and all of that stuff. Follow me on Instagram for updates. Um, but the boot camp will be starting next week. It's today. Think of today and Saturday as a little bit of a teaser of what the boot camps are going to be like. Kind of like a little, you know, a taste, 
<laughs> a taste for the boot camp um, out here. All right, so now we have here our most most of the general shapes. I, I might hold on. I might add like one. Uh, let's see here. Kind of like that. Okay, there you go. Um, boot camp appetizer. Yeah, you know, just to be like, hey, if you guys like what you see here, uh, consider joining in next week. Um, and again, joining the boot camp is completely free. Uh, I will always have resources and stuff and, and upload. The only thing that I ask is that um, if you guys want all the cheat sheets and worksheets, that you make sure you come out live if you want them for free because all the resources that I give you guys, like this worksheet that we're doing today, um, as well as some other cheat sheets. I'll show you guys another one that I gave you guys. Um, this sheet right here, which I'm also giving you guys, which covers the skeletal anatomy, muscular anatomy, all of that stuff. These are only available while I'm live. But if you want to get access to these off stream, um, do it at your own time and stuff, do consider subscribing. And that way you're helping yourself grab all of these whenever you can. But you also help me out, too, because it, you know, I do I do do this for a living. But Again, I try to make it as free as possible. So all that I ask, if you guys want the free resources, just come out here when I'm live and I will always have something uh, for you guys to grab. Um, hey, thank you for the follows. Damn hands. Mood. What a mood. When you're trying to draw the hands, when you draw a good piece... And then everything looks good. And then the moment you start trying to draw the hands and you're just like, yo, what the heck? What's going on? Let me go ahead and actually, let me make this one a little bit bigger. Um, I want more room so I can draw more thinner lines and stuff. Um, thank you for the follow breaded. <laughs> Have I considered making a tutorial on how to make cheat sheets? I mean, I'm kind of doing it now. I mean, all the stuff that you're seeing now that I'm covering, I'm probably going to turn this into a cheat sheet, right? So all the tips about the the head and the anatomy and the forms and perspective, these are all probably going to turn into uh uh into a into a cheat uh cheat sheet. All right. So here we're going to go in with the forms again. Uh, and then let me go in now. I'll talk about, I'll, I'll do all the details here, but while I'm doing the details, I'll talk to you guys a little bit about dealing with art plateau and how to get yourself out of that plateau, um, that you might be feeling if you, if you're kind of like, man, I I'm stuck with my art. I feel like I haven't been improving, uh, X, Y, Z, right? So oftentimes whenever I hear people feel like they're saying they're, they're plateauing with their art and stuff. Usually the problem that I that I find is that artists are feeling like they want to improve, right? They want to get better, but every time they try to do something new, the moment that it gets a little difficult or it doesn't look good or as good as what they normally make, what do they do? They give up, right? You guys have been in that situation where put an F in the chat if this sounds familiar. Let's say you're good at drawing female characters or you're really good at drawing male characters. And the moment you try to draw a different character, maybe you're like, hmm, you know what? I'm gonna try, I'm gonna try drawing some male characters today. And the moment that it gets difficult, what do you do? You stop, you're like, you know what? I'm gonna go back to drawing what I regularly draw. Right? And so here you are, you're on this, you're on this growth line, and you're trying to improve. And every time you try, you shut yourself down, and then you're back in again because you keep drawing the same thing every single day. Every single day. And then you wonder to yourself, you say, I wonder why I'm not growing. I wonder why I'm not improving. I feel like I've been stuck. I've been, I feel like I'm plateauing, right? You, you, you realize that, that that's kind of what happens, right? You stay in your comfort zone. Exactly. You stay into your style. You stay into the same stuff that you draw because every time you try to give yourself that chance, you end up feeling like it's too hard. And then what happens? In your brain, your brain starts to reinforce in your mind that, hey, new things are bad, right? Don't do new things because every time I do new things, I get upset. 
my art looks like trash and so I shouldn't do that and so then you end up in a cycle where you just feel like you keep drawing the same thing every single time and you want to get better you keep telling yourself I want to improve I want to improve but um but I want to improve only in the ways that I already know and the drawings that I already do and so for those of you who really want to get out of that plateau the thing that I would tell you guys that you really should start looking into doing is being able to one try new things but also learn to learn to let go of that idea of perfectionism learn to let go of the idea that hey you know all my drawings have to look good and even I deal with that sometimes too like um last week when I was drawing Ellie and I was like yo drawing drawing children is really hard I don't usually draw children for work and even personally um but you know I was like I w- and I was getting frustrated. I was like, man, this is not turning out as, as, as well as I'd like. But I realized like, hey, this is actually a learning opportunity for me because how can you actually get better at doing something unless you actually practice doing that thing, right? Like if you don't, if you don't actually put the work in, you'll never technically get better at it. It's like watching a YouTube video on a tutorial and thinking that you know how to do something just because you watched someone do it. But until you do it yourself, build the experience necessary to do those things uh, and keep working on that craft and refining your skill, you will never actually have that skill, right? Not even your mind knows. Because here's the thing. A lot of the times people underestimate how how much information they retain. You guys ever read a book? And then all of a sudden you kind of like zone out and you realize you kind of skipped through two pages of a book and you just read a bunch of gibberish on a text and you don't remember anything, put an F in the chat if you've ever done that. A lot of times people think that they remember things better than they actually know. But if I tested you today and asked you guys, hey, how much of this do you actually remember? Probably might be like, yeah, maybe not as much, right? Unless you have photographic memory, which maybe you guys do. Some of you might have photographic memory. But unless you have photographic memory, there's a good chance here that you're not actually retaining as much as you know. And so, or as much as you think. And so the best way to go about that is by actually practicing those things and reinforcing that knowledge in your mind as you continue to develop your skills and stuff. Right? Pop quiz. I know you guys didn't know there was a test at the end of the stream. <laughs> uh, gotcha. All right. So let's, um, let's go ahead here and work on the details and I'll, I'll start refining some of the line work and stuff. Um, this is usually the phase now where I'm going to go in here and start pushing out all the forms, giving a little bit of texture to the hair and, you know, just having fun, um, having some fun with this one. What test? (laughs) You're like, what? (laughs) Classic, classic back in school when you'd come into class and then they'd be like, all right, we're having a test today. And you guys are like, huh? Test. I don't remember this. Yeah. Um, my brain must be quite weird. I'm only interested in doing, um, into doing hard stuff that I never did before. That's good. I think if you're in that state, that's really good. Um, I think you've maybe, you've maybe reinforced in your mind that, Hey, whenever you try new things, it can actually be rewarding to you, which I think is a great mentality to have, you know, um, having that, having that opportunity to try new things, I think is something that a lot of beginner artists can relate to, right? I'm sure some of you guys have felt this way when you were a beginner artist, you felt like you could draw so freely, right? You could draw whenever, draw whatever. You were less stressed about what you were drawing. Maybe you felt like you were growing so much when you were first starting out, right? And then now you feel so different. Now you're like, oh, it's so hard to draw sometimes. Things don't look as good. I feel like I'm not growing as much. Why do you think that happens? Because when you're younger, when you first start out, you don't have as much pressure, about trying new things. There's no expectations that you set for yourself about whether or not something is supposed to look really good or how something is even supposed to look like, right? But as you start drawing more and as you start saying, wow, these are the good drawings, these are the bad drawings, all of a sudden it becomes a little bit more difficult to start drawing regularly. It starts becoming more difficult to try new things. So if you can get back into that mental state of just trying new things for the sake of trying, that's actually really good. Um, 
I think so, at least. Uh, thank you for the sub, by the way. Korean Candy, appreciate the seven months out here. And thank you for all the follows, guys. Bro Z, uh, 613 Spiral, The Deke, 78. Hopefully, you guys are doing well. Um, today's going to be a tutorial stream. We're going over heads and stuff. We've already done one uh, tutorial here where we did the female head here. Female, oop, female person's head. I'm just going over some of the some of the the forms and stuff. Um, I feel like all artists can get stuck in that comfort zone, especially when their art becomes what they are known for and their main profit to general, uh, to general friends, fans. Uh, but on a general note in an artist's personal growth, the well is endless for learning new things in art. That is the amazing, enriching, humbling experience yet scary. Yeah, I think that's so true. And I think to, to your point, if you are in a situation where you have to draw a certain style professionally or whatever, or just, you know, that's kind of your thing. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. Right. But I think what you can do is save time for yourself personally to explore different things. Cause like I, I do that all the time. So like there's a style that I have to draw when I'm working. Right. So when I'm, when I'm doing studio work at powerhouse, there's a very particular style that they, that they want me to draw for the show and all of that stuff. And so for eight hours a day, five days a week, that's the style that I draw. But for when it's my own stuff, I, I you know, I try to give myself some time to, uh, just draw, draw my own things and my own style. Sometimes I'll try different styles or I'll see a style from, um, Instagram or an artist that I like. And I'm like, oh, okay, I kind of want to, you know, try a little bit of that, see what they're doing. Um, is there a reason why you flip your canvas? Mm, it's a new perspective. Yeah. It's, um, one of the nice things about flipping your canvas is that you can start to observe um, start to observe some of the mistakes you might be making. Sometimes if you're drawing, um, you might kind of skew or uh, tend to lean towards a certain side of your drawing. Uh, that happens all the time. So by constantly flipping your canvas, you can start to see some of the imbalances in your work and, and be able to correct those things a lot easier. Um, do I get whiplash switching to different styles like that? Thankfully, not as much because, because thankfully the style of, um, the style of powerhouse. And if you guys have seen Castlevania, you know what I'm talking about, but like that semi-realistic style is kind of what I, what I already do in some ways. Like I already do semi-realistic. Um, if there's anything that changes, it's going to be usually the level of detail that goes into the work. Um, the, for example, the way that they draw eyes, the way that they draw noses and mouths, um, those things might change a little bit, but otherwise like the proportions are going to be relatively the same. The, um, all of that stuff is going to be pretty similar. So thankfully it's not like too crazy where it's like, oh man, castle, uh, Castlevania style is so different. I think if I was working on a show, like, I don't know, SpongeBob or something. And I think that's going to be so different from my style because it's like a very cartoony style and I do something that's more realistic then yeah, that might give me a little bit of whiplash because I'm just like, man, I go from drawing cartoony to like super real, like semi-realistic art, you know, it's going to be like, what the heck? So yeah, I think in those cases, I can see that happening pretty regularly. Um, you want the Reno tuna style? Yeah, I think that's a really good style. I think Reno tuna, um, does a really good job of really capturing a sense of realism in their style. And I mean, they just make it look super easy, but also they're, they're, a, they're a pro. They've been a pro for a while. I have only been working professionally for two years. So I have a long way to go. <laughs> comparatively to to artists like Reno Tuna for sure uh 
uh, let's see here. Is you know anime realistic style? So please look at yeah. And I mean, if you if you ever watch what they do, they they're just really. It's really cool to see because they're very intentional with what they do, and I think that's really a big part of you know as you develop your skill and stuff you start to really think about like hey which which lines which details are really important for for my style that i want to convey and which ones do i really not care too much about so then i'll spend less time on it let's see here I'm still thinking that um, if I'm drawing with reference, then I must copy every exact detail, like the negative space from the reference. Right. So I think that's a great that's a great um, question because maybe some of you guys feel that way, right? Like how many of you guys in the chat um, ever ever feel like if you're using reference, like you feel like the reference is kind of boxing you in. You feel like you have to kind of you feel like you might be copying the reference more than you'd like. Put an F in the chat if you've ever been that way with your art. I think I used to feel that way all the time, especially when I was first starting out. I was, you know, using references a lot and studying and stuff. But then I was feeling like, oh man, it's not. I feel like, what can I do when, 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 um, if I'm not using a reference? And you look at the reference, or if you try to draw something without a reference, and you're like, huh, why does that look so funny? Why does it not look as good? And so the advice I would give is there's a couple things. One, if you are using references, try to mix your references up a little bit so you can stylize your reference, right? Maybe, maybe you're going to draw this head, but maybe you focus on the shape language and you focus on the roundness of it. So you simplify some of the roundness of the head instead. Um, maybe you change some of the proportions, maybe you change some of the details or you, or you tilt the head a little bit at an angle, right? So you can definitely do, um, small things that can help you push away from the reference. So that way you're not copying the reference exactly. Uh, so stuff like that can help, but also things that you can do off off time. So when you're not when you're not using references, um, things that you can do, for example, is spend a little bit of time just practicing drawing from imagination. So here's an example of this. Um, I do this all all the time. So I spend about ten minutes. I spend about ten minutes um, just drawing heads from imagination from from invention, and then I tr I try to take notes. I'm like, okay, I kind of like how this thing looks like. I don't like how the hair looks like here, you know. But these are just exercises that I do where I'm not using any references, and I'm just trying to um, see what I can retain, see what I can come up with, um, and then start building some of that practice as well. And you know what? Sometimes the heads don't look good, and that's okay. That's not the that's not the point of the exercise, right? It's not to be like, hey, take a look at this crazy cool thing I did without a reference. It's more about you almost testing yourself in a way to see like, hey, how much do I actually remember from the references I use? Because sometimes we use references, right? And then the moment you're done with the piece, what happens? You, you forget. You forget all the things you learned about the reference. So I always tell people like study the reference, right? Study the reference, study how things are working, study the shapes and the forms, and then bring that back into your own piece. Because the more you do that, the more visual library you start to establish, right? The, the more you'll remember, the more you'll retain and be able to apply. And then the more you'll be able to see references um, in different ways too, because the better you get, the more you can start to visualize a reference and use it for different things. Um, a really good example of that, I'll show you guys really quick after I just finish some of these details. But a good example of this is um, last year for one of my boot camps, I actually showed you guys an exercise where you can take a reference image and um, from those from that reference image, be able to then uh, be able to then do things from your own imagination. So here's an example of this. So I showed you guys how to take this reference image that we had here. This is day 23 of my fundamentals bootcamp, by the way, where I show you guys, okay, let's break down the forms, let's break down the structure. And then what I said was from here, from imagination, I want you guys to rotate that box, right? Rotate the body a little bit this way. And let's draw it again, this time from our own imagination and see how that looks like. And that feels then if you feel good about that, Rotate it a little bit more. Let's change it now vertically and lower that horizon line a little bit more, right? And let's do that from imagination. And then if you feel good about that, then let's go crazier. Let's rotate it some more again and let's see how we can draw this one out. And so technically I drew all of these from this one reference here, right? But I went from, I went from this pose to basically this pose using the same reference, 
You get what I'm saying? So as you start developing your skills and your fundamentals and stuff, you can start to build your visual library more and more to be able to use references in a way that is different from actually just copying the reference exactly. You get, you get what I'm saying? But again, it all starts off by doing small, simple changes. And then also it starts off by exploring these things yourself and practicing these techniques um, without the use of reference, such that when you do have a reference, it no longer feels like something that is holding you down, but instead allows you to you know, try new things and, and explore different avenues with your art and your, your design. Um, it's a good practice, but it definitely is a practice that requires a good understanding of form and, and, and perspective as well. So before you start jumping into crazy practices like that, I would definitely encourage you guys to practice a little bit of the, um, the other fundamentals too. Um, having a good reference is important too. Good lighting and angle. Exactly. Yeah. And, and you can use references for different things, right? Um, thank you for the follows, by the way, Blake, Isia, snake, uh, Caroline 14, uh, YRG, uh, Lex, Lex, Stick, Lex, Stick C, and everybody else coming in here. Uh, what do you consider as useful reference? How or where do you choose your references from? I'm too confused with all the possibilities. I think there's so many different places. Um, I think there's so many different places that you can go and, and, and grab references. You can go to Pinterest, Instagram, DeviantArt. I would say it's really up to you. Yeah, there's so many different options you can go with. And here's another bad bad correctly. Mm, yeah, you might be right. Let me go ahead. Easy fix. See, this is what happens when you liquefy so much. There you go. Cool, cool. Um, but yeah, I mean, today is more of like a quick, a quick proportional stuff. So we're trying to power through a lot of these. We have a bunch of other references, but yeah, that's a good call out. Um, what does the F stand for? You press it to pay respect. Um, I'm looking around if you're seeing me because that's exactly my problem. I'm struggling on using references. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, again, I think it's not an uncommon thing. It's it's something that even I have, you know, dealt with um, in the past and even sometimes now. I still feel like, you know, I'm trying to get better at not relying too heavily on references because, um, or at least not, not copying references exactly because if you are only doing that, I feel like you're limiting yourself from the potential opportunities of trying new things and and also, you know, putting your own twist to, to the references you're seeing and stuff. Okay. Fashion magazines are your go-to. Uh, just take a simple vase, lamp chair and rotate that. Yeah, exactly. Like you can start off simple. You guys don't have to go super crazy. Um, and do, you know, <laughs> do the whole like human body and stuff. Um, let's see here. By the way, guys, I do run ads. I do run ads on my stream every hour. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around. They do help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. If you don't want to see any ads, consider subscribing or using a prime sub, but either way, thank you for your support. And I hope to see you guys, um, after after the ad break. All right. I think this is fine um, for the hair. Again, we don't have to go super crazy here. Um, I'm just adding in a few breaks and whatnot to, to the texture. But I think overall, this is, this is okay with me. Um, I think we can move on from here. So let's see if I can kind of liquefy some things a little bit and then I think we'll be good to go.
When was the last intro? About 30-ish minutes ago. I haven't done an intro in a while. Um, let's see here. Were there any questions that I might have missed? Um, can you tell me more about Skillshare? Can you learn on, uh, can you learn on more on Procreate? Um, yes, actually you can. So if you guys didn't know, um, I'm actually sponsored by Skillshare this, um, this month and which is super cool. Uh, so if you guys are interested in Skillshare, you guys can actually check, take a look at this link here, but also I actually did make a mistake, um, on Monday which I'll talk about in a bit. So I'm going to pin this message here um, for a little bit. And I'll talk about that in a second. Um, let's see here. I made, I made a mistake during my sponsored stream. And now I'm going to ask for your guys' help. <laughs> um, but let's see here. So we got here the general proportions of the face. I think we're basically good to go. Let me show you guys some of the, the before and after here of what we worked with. So here is the, again, here's the head. So here's actually, hold on. Here's the skull that we worked with, right? So here's that skull. Okay. Uh, and then, no, no, they're not mad. Skillshare is not mad. They're just, I just, it was on me. Um, <laughs> here's the skull. Here's the head that we drew, right? Here's the hair, the general volume of the hair. Uh, where that, where the head go? <laughs> Sheesh, that looks kind of cool actually. But no, 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 no. Um, here's the head. And so there you go. That's some of the, um, the general structure there for the head, um, that we got here today. Let's now go in and work on another head here. But yeah. Let me know when you guys are back from the ad break. No, no, no. Skillshare didn't send any, send any hit, hit men to me. Uh, ramen Ashi. Hey, welcome in. Okay, are you guys back? Are you guys back from the ad break? Yes? Thoughts on the iPad for Procreate? I haven't used it, but everyone seems to love it. What's your experience with yours? I love it. It's probably the best program that I had. I've used Photoshop, CSP, not Krita, but I've used a good amount, and I would say Procreate is still my favorite. All right, you guys are back? Okay, cool, cool. So, okay, really quick, guys. I actually made a mistake. Pause the music. I made a mistake on Monday. I had a sponsored stream um, with Skillshare on Monday and I used the wrong link. And so they just told me like, hey, can you use the right link next time? So if you guys could do me a big favor, I know this is this might be a lot to ask, but if you guys can just click on that link there, okay, you don't even have to get the Skillshare promo or whatever, but just helping click on that link there, it helps Skillshare know that you guys are interested. I know a lot of you guys were there on Monday and clicked on the link Monday. I apologize that I have to ask this again, but if you guys can just click on that link there, it actually helps me out tremendously and lets Skillshare know that you guys are actually watching and, you know, you know, somewhat engaged with Skillshare and stuff. Um, there's a link here. I'll type it again in the chat. You guys might not see it in the chat, but here is the, here's the link here. Um, and also if you guys want a free month of a trial of Skillshare, um, it's, it's free for the first uh, month. Do consider it. Um, I think a lot of guys have had questions about whether or not Skillshare is helpful. We've done a full on demo actually, where you guys can see how I went over with the classes and stuff. Uh, but they have a lot of different things over there on Skillshare from figure drawing art to finances, to social media management, to learning how to code. All the different courses are over there. So if you guys are interested, you can take a look at that too, but even just clicking on it helps me out a lot. So appreciate that guys. And thank you. I know I, I goofed up. I goofed up on Monday. I used the wrong link and they like messaged me and they're like, Hey, we didn't see anything. You said you streamed on Monday and we didn't see any activity. And I was like, what? There's no way. There's no way there's no activity. And they're like, yeah, we didn't see anything. And I was like, oof, <laughs> oof, I can't believe it. Yeah, no, but that was on me. That was on me. So that's just rookie mistakes. Here I am, pro, pro streamer Kasem, streaming for so many years now. <laughs> rookie mistake. But yeah. Um, but anyways, we've drawn here the head. I think this is pretty much good for me. I'm not going to do any more than this because again, this is more of just like a demo for you guys. Um, but I would say this is pretty solid, right? So we went from having a simple block of hair like this, adding in some of the general vo uh, forms here, 
and then adding in some of that texture and detail to really kind of push it out of just a bit more there. Um, let me go ahead and fix up the eyes as well too. I'll give it the classic, um, the classic powerhouse eyes. There you go. Lay in the flats. You want me to really? Here's what I'll do. I'll lay in the grays. Okay. We'll do some grays today. Um, let me go ahead and merge all of this. And then, oh, here's a, here's a cool thing that we can try. Watch this. Ooh, anatomy of the skull. <laughs> Okay, let's go ahead and yeah, I'll, sure. I'll do a quick little gray um, gray fill uh, with you guys. Why not? Oh, my dog, he's chilling. The betrayal on his face. He wants out. I know. He's like, let me free. Sorry, bud. Not today. First, let me prep these real quick. Set it to about 40% here. Duplicate it again. Do a little motion blur here. Okay, there you go. Merge that. Um, but yeah, um, I hope today's stream has been helpful so far. Uh, let me know. Let me know in the chat if there was anything anything that you guys found interesting, anything you guys found helpful. Uh, we're going pretty deep in the sauce today with tutorials and stuff. So we got here all of these things that we drew earlier. We're going to talk about how to connect. We're going to talk about the muscles um, next. So after I fill in this one, I'm thinking for this head, we're going to talk about how to actually compare and connect the muscular anatomy here from the top of the head to the neck there. All right. So it's going to get a little bit more heavy in the, the technological or not technological uh, technical terms here. But um. I hope that's I hope that's okay with you guys. Let me know. Let me know if it's been let me know if this is kind of something you guys are vibing with. Um, you know, if you guys are new here and you didn't know, because maybe you just joined recently, but I'm I'm actually known on Twitch for doing a lot of anatomy stuff. So all the expression stuff that we did last week and the week before, that's just like the fun times. Fun times, no anatomy, don't worry about it. But now we're now that we're back in it, we're gonna be doing some anatomy. Um, kind of like what you're seeing here where I talk about all the forms and then how to apply on top of those forms. Praying you'd notice that I just completely ignore my dog. I'm sorry. I'm no, I'm no for calling. Yeah. Yeah. I guess that too. 2023 has been a while, a wild year, man. I'm being called out for so many things. Um, let's see here. Don't forget the freestyle wraps. Some people don't know about it. Some people don't stay for it. Um, the good cilantro, orange soul arts, and everybody else coming in here. Thank you for all the follows today, guys. Welcome into the case and crew. I guess it's been some time. Should I give an intro about myself? We've had a, we've had a few, a few good follows out here. I'm on the streams. Sure. I will give an intro of myself for you guys. <laughs> um, okay. Here is, um, let's do an intro. Um, do the camera switch to everything. Okay. I do have a Skillshare link. Yeah, I do. <laughs> okay. Here intro time. All right. Ready? Three, two, one. What is up crew? My name is KSM and I'm actually a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, character design, and all of that stuff. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, currently prepping right now to be a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Invincible, and Legend of Korra. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, you guys like my dog who is way, way off in the corner over there, or you just like hanging out on a stream on a Thursday, do leave a follow, uh, join in, and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream. There you go. 
that's my little intro for those of you guys who are new here maybe didn't know uh didn't know anything about me and stuff came for the came for at the end was surprised oh okay that's cool cherry i was like some people don't know that i that i do that and stuff so i'm glad you stayed for it you always thought <laughs> i always thought you were just known as a sandwich guy damn imagine imagine just coming to my stream and only knowing me as a sandwich guy that's your only that's your lasting impression of me that i that i thought sandwiches are mid that's rough. Uh, what was that question about peanut butter? I saw a question earlier. Smooth or chunky peanut butter? I like chunky. I like the texture. I don't know. Is that weird? Is it weird that I prefer um, chunky peanut butter over smooth? I just feel like, okay, when I was younger, when I was younger, yeah, I was like, I like smooth. The chunky is kind of weird. But now that I'm older and I've got more of a sophisticated palette, I kind of like the, I kind of like the, um, the texture. Is it good for my teeth? Probably not, but <laughs> whatever. Chunky's goaded. I'm a man of culture. Yeah. I, I don't know. I just think it's, I think it's better personally. That's just my take, um, you know. Okay, there you go. There's um, there's some gray flats. I didn't want to do some flat flats because I'm lazy, but here's some grays that we can work with. Hey, thank you for the follow. Silent, um, in a silent way. Um, you eat peanut butter smooth doesn't make sense. <laughs> um, is that possible on CSP? I don't think so. Um, actually, it might be possible, but you need to. Um, you need you need to change your CSP settings so that it's um. So that it's going to be using the, the plus instead. All right. Yeah, let's go. Let's go move on to the next one. Let me go ahead and shrink. Um, what's the best way to do this? There's so many, there's so many floating things here now going on on my screen that I want to move things around. So I want to move, um, okay, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to move this one down. Okay. Uh, and then I'm going to just take this reference that we have and I'm just going to copy paste this one. And so that way we can talk about the next thing here. There you go. Um, I've noticed your studies are low resolution. They look good when zoomed out though. Is there any reason for that? Do you, you have any recommendation for canvas brush size? Um, I've noticed your studies are low resolution. They look good when zoomed out though. Low resolution? You mean these? Or you mean like zoomed out this way or zoomed out this way? I always forget zoomed out like this. Um, I don't know. I use 4k resolution. I don't think you need to use too much. I think as long as you're not using 1080p, you should be okay. Um, uh, let's see. Do you have any recommendations for canvas brush size or best practices? I think it depends. Again, depends on what you're looking for. If you guys are talking about, oh, by the way, if you guys are talking about the studies here, um, if you're downloading stuff off of my, off of my discord, make sure you click on this open in browser, because if you just right click and you just save like that, um, you're actually going to get the low res image. So this one right here, if you open this, this will give you 4k resolution. So I know some people in the chat before were like, KSM, the quality is not good when I download these. It's because you're probably not using uh, 4k resolution. So click on that one there and this will open it in a new tab in the browser. Um, and you can see here 
just how much you can zoom in on these bad boys. Like you can really zoom in and get a lot of the details um, for these. So that could be what you're referring to. Um, I'm not too sure because there could be a lot of different things um, going on there. Yeah, did that did that answer your question? Maybe because they should be pretty high quality. They should be pretty like 4K. Nice mounts. Thank you. Um, all right. The JSON redemption sandwiches are not mid. What the? <sighs> all right. We got a JSON redemption here. Also, thank you for quenching my thirst. Here we go. JSON redemption. It's your boy, JSON. Um, let's see. Hey, what's up, guys? It's me, uh, Jason here. Just wanted to let y'all know that Quiddity, Quiddity said sandwiches are not mid. Personally, I think they're pretty, they're pretty five out of ten. But up to you guys. But there you go, message from Jason. Sheesh. There it is. Good old Jason Redemption. Thank you for the follow, Sento and Bissetti, and in in a silent way. Uh, did I choose my favorite sandwich? I think I, hmm, favorite sandwich, huh? It's a tough question. Very tough question. Um, I, it's not that I think sandwiches are bad. I, it's just, again, it's just more like, um, just like personally speaking, I think sandwiches are okay. Like I could live, I could live my life and not have consumed a sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't think there was ever a sandwich that I had. that I was like, oh my gosh, this is a game changer. I, I, you know, I got to eat this all the time. This is my favorite thing to eat. I don't know. I've just, I've just never been that way. I think I grew up with a lot of rice. I grew up with a lot of, uh, you know, that was like my Asian, my Asian diet. So personally, Personally, sandwiches are not super close to my heart. Uh, news on the CU brushes. I need them for the boot camp start. Oh, um, hopefully this weekend. I, I got really busy last weekend, unfortunately, so I didn't end up um I didn't end up doing it, but I will try to do it this time around. Do you have rice every day? Almost. Almost every day I have rice. Yes. Is that crazy? Is that crazy for some people? I feel like, I don't know. I feel like that's, that's like normal if you're in an Asian household, right? Have you ever uh, drawn One Piece characters? You know, we did actually. I drew randomly. I <laughs> We did this reference study or I turned this girl in this pose to Frankie um, from One Piece and we just did this one for fun. And that was kind of wild. Um, yeah, we did that. Um, I think I drew Zoro. I, I, I drew Zoro, uh, Zoro at some point. Zoro. Uh, Zoro. But yeah, it's normal. Yeah, I think so. Microwavable rice. What is this? Microwavable rice? Nah, nah, nah. What the heck is that? Microwavable rice? You got to use a rice cooker. Or better yet, do the finger, um, half finger water rice technique. Microwavable rice. That's a thing? I cannot right now, man. Don't tell me that's a thing. Rice is cheap to you. I'm in a family and they would not eat dinner before the rice was served. Yep, that sounds right. That's, that's exactly how I do it too. I always have to wait for the rice. And the rice is like... The rice is the staple of the dish, 100%. Um, half <laughs> as a thing in Korea, really? I still owe you some robo legs. I know I baited you guys out one time, didn't I? I was like, let's go draw some uh, some uh, robo legs on this guy, and then never happened. 
All right, so for this one right here, let's go ahead and talk about um, the head. And one of the things I'm going to call out is going to be the subtle changes between the male and the female head. Um, so earlier, we talked a little bit about the, the anatomy and stuff. But basically, one of the things I'm going to call out is that when you're drawing a head, one of the things that is very important is understanding that if you're drawing a male versus a female head, there's going to be some subtle changes there. So let me go ahead and draw this one out real quick. Uh, and then from there, we'll go and I'll talk to you guys about the, the, some of the, the changes there, some of the structural things. Um, between you and Phil? Phil, don't tell me Phil eats with, with uh, microwavable rice. What the heck? Uh, don't sleep on Trader Joe's microwave rice. Perfect for a quick rice. No way. I'm going to have to try this. This is insane. Really? Microwaved rice, huh? And it's good? This sounds like, um, this sounds like something Uncle Roger would be like, ah, yeah, microwavable rice? <laughs> no way. Uncle Ben's be hidden? Interesting. I've never had Uncle Ben's. I, the only reason why I know of Uncle Ben's was because people used to meme Uncle Ben from Spider-Man, you know? Uncle Ben! That was it. That was my only only knowledge of Uncle Ben's uh, microwavable meals. Hmm. This remix is hilarious. This is a classic. Shout out to my Persona fans. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'm just drawing out the face real quick here. Nothing too crazy, I hope. Um, let's see here. I had the right amount of rice, at least one. Cool. How do you find your reference photos? Um, these are all just Pinterest. Honestly, Pinterest is a pretty good, pretty good place to find references, I think. But I always tell you guys, and I mean, we, we did this demo earlier. Personally, I think, um, personally, I think don't, don't spend too much time trying to find the right reference because sometimes we as artists get in this trap where you're spending a little bit too much time finding the right reference and not, and not enough time drawing. Put an F in the chat if you've ever done that before. Right? You're like, huh, you know what? I want to draw something today. Spend five hours scrolling on Pinterest, Instagram, looking for a reference. And then you spend like 30 minutes drawing and then be like, yeah. <laughs> when you spend more time trying to find the right reference than actually drawing, that's how you might be. That's how you might know that uh, you might need to change, change it up a little bit. Because personally, I think, I think the, the reference shouldn't dictate your overall picture. I, I like to I like to have an idea first of what I want to do and then I try to find references after uh, that I think might help with this idea. So that's kind of how I usually go about whenever I'm reference gathering. But it depends too. Um, it depends on the situation. All right, so for this one right here, um, what I want to do actually is... I want to do kind of the anatomy of the of the neck. All right. So we'll we'll talk about the head. We talked about the anatomy of the head and stuff here. So for this one, we'll talk about the anatomy of the neck. And I'll show you guys kind of like maybe an exploded view. So you can kind of see how how that looks like. You mean looking for references, not actual work? I think I think it can be hundred percent. But if you're spending more time trying to find that right reference, that specific reference of the right angle of the right positioning and stuff for your character or whatever, I think that might be uh, you might be too reliant on the reference, right? Because I've shown you guys a couple of times of different exercises you can do 
that make it so that you're not super reliant on a reference, right? That you can, um, you can work with a reference that maybe is close enough. And then from there, you know, find ways to tweak it and, and push it to your own, uh, to your own liking. All right, so I'm going to I'm going to just move away from the hair and stuff for a little bit. I'm not going to do the hair yet because what I want to do is I want to talk about the anatomy of the neck. And so we'll we'll break that down in a bit. Uh and then from there we will um and then I'll I'll draw the character and stuff. We can do that after. Cuz I don't know, oh man, I really wanted to see if we could do the top down view today. Or not the top down. Um the girl kind of looking up at an angle today, but I don't know if we'll have time. Uh, we'll see. We might have time for it. Okay, so let's do a quick hairline. And then we'll work on the neck. Um, do I have any specific recommendations for art courses on Skillshare? I think if you're looking for just something interesting, uh, I think Gabriel Piccolo's course on character design, I think is really cool. Nice and simple one hour one. There's another one on, um, how to kind of build a daily practice routine, which I think is great. And then there's another one where it depends. There's so many, but I would say those are kind of good ones to start. They also, I think Skillshare also recommends um, some stuff that you can also look at too. I've personally, I've personally been thinking about like doing my own stuff on Skillshare. I've thought about it cause I was like, you know what? I could, I could kind of do one of these myself, to be honest. <laughs> I was like, I can do this. This seems, this seems like something that's up my alley. All right, so before we jump into talking about the, the neck, um, let's talk a little bit about the differences between the male and the female head here. All right, so let me just fix this. So one of the main differences between male and female, uh, let me kind of duplicate it and move it over here. And I wonder if I have a layer here. Oh, I just merged it, didn't I? I didn't really keep an original layer. Actually, hold on. I might have. Let's see this one. Perfect. Nice. Okay, so I, I did keep it. That's good. Um, so the main differences here between male and female, again, I'll go over them right now. Um, it's very subtle. It's, it's a very, a very few subtle things here, but I'll, I'll, I'll explain to you guys how knowing these subtleties can actually help kind of push, um, the general forms and stuff uh, between male and female. So one of the main things I want to call out is going to be that when you're working with, um, when you're working here with a female, uh, face, Oftentimes the the female head, let me do this. I'm gonna is it this layer? Okay, cool. So oftentimes the the female head is actually gonna be a little bit rounder um in terms of like the forehead and stuff, and also a little bit flatter. So you can kind of see here a little bit of that that flow for the for the face there. Uh whereas with the male, this again, these are generalizations, right? So keep that in mind. Um, you'll tend to see sometimes a protruding for, uh, forehead, right? So pretty sharp angles there. Um, and also sometimes you'll see some sharpness there on the nose. Uh, but that's kind of a main one. And then another one right here too, is if you take a look at the angle here of the jaw, you'll notice that the angle of the jaw here is going to be a little bit sharper, um, and a little bit lower than if you were looking at the female one. So if you look at the angle here of a female, uh, the female jaw, you'll see that's a little bit more obtuse. It's a little bit wider, right? And also a little bit softer of a trans of a transition. So you can kind of think of these things as general things that you can do with the, 
uh, with the female versus male. So this is female, female head, uh, male head here. Okay. Uh, and then other things you can note too is going to be the necks. So necks tend to be a little bit thicker uh, with the male characters and a little bit thinner with the female characters. So we'll talk about, we'll talk about necks right now, actually. So let's kind of start there, but here was just a little bit of a, a breakdown there of that one for you guys to see. Um, let's see here. Thank you for the D shrimp quiddity. But okay, let's talk about next. And this will be a fun demo here. Let's see. Is it this one? Perfect. All right. So I'm going to take this head here and then what I'm going to do, um, yeah, and you can definitely stylize it again. These are just, just brief generalizations. Don't, don't feel like this is something you have to do all the time. Um, but you can stylize it. You can have it feel, you know, how, how you want it to look like and stuff. But let's kind of talk a little bit about the head here. And I'm going to, I'm going to do this thing here where I'm going to kind of explode the view here. So let me do this on a new layer first. I'm going to draw out the neck. Okay. So here's that portion of the neck. And I'm going to do a little bit different from what the reference, uh, what the reference images has, uh, just to make it easier here. But here we're going to kind of find that center line of the head, right? Uh, we're going to build some thickness on both sides there. So we're going to go here, establish that thickness there. Uh, and then maybe we'll find the, the neck there, that portion. And that's going to be the, the volume of the neck that we have here. Okay. Uh, and then what I'm going to do here, just to kind of show you guys a little bit more about the anatomy, is I'm going to kind of break this, break this neck apart. Uh, so that sounds kind of gross. But I'm going to move this neck here like this. And we're going to find, uh, let me, maybe I'll do it like this first. Um, go like this. Okay. We're going to go like this and I'm going to show you guys how some of the, um, actual muscles and stuff work around here. Okay. Um, <laughs> Uh, Twitch is stream rewards. If you have time to go stream rewards and vote KSM as best art stream. Oh, <gasps> you can do that. No way. Really? What's it called? Wait, is there a link streamer Twitch streamer awards, Twitch streamer awards. Ah, I didn't know that existed. <gasps> you can nominate. Is this legit? Is it this one? Is it this link right here? Wait. Yo, yo, vote for me. <laughs> I didn't know this exists. Hold on. This is so cool. Yo guys, if you ever, if you ever want to vote for your, for your favorite art streamer and you're thinking about it, um, feel free to put me if you want to. That's super cool. Yo, I didn't even know this existed. Spread the word. Vote KSM. Best art streamer 2022. We tried our best, man. We did it. We had a good year last year for sure. That is so cool. That is so cool. I got to fill this list out myself. When is it? When is it due by? Hopefully I'm not too late, you know? Um, welcome to the nominations phase of the stream rewards. Okay, blah, blah, blah. Nominations, past winners, about. Um, here, nominations will close on, a, on February 11th. All right, we got some time, guys. We got some time for best streamer of the year for artists, art category. Yo, that's so cool. All right. Thanks for letting me know about that. Um, speaking of which, thank you so much. Um, you have to write five artists there. I know you, you can choose. It doesn't have to be me, but if you guys enjoy my content and stuff, feel free to vote me on there. Um, thank you so much for the 10 gifted DJ. Sheesh. Congratulations to hurricane. Uh, pa Paula, Vampire, Madoc, uh, Chad Lutsky, Small Rennie, the, uh, the Echo Lore, Sick Muse Slays, and Kuro Raven. Congratulations for getting those gifted subs from um, DJ. Guys, claps in the chat. Claps in the chat real quick for DJ for gifting those. Um, and um, for those of you guys who, who are here and didn't know, 
Um, every time you subscribe or gift a sub on my stream, it actually not only helps me and I guess helps you, but it actually also helps everybody in the community because every 10 subs on my stream actually unlocks a free art resource that you guys can go ahead and download. So um, here's the, one of the free resources already, but I'm gonna give you guys another one here. I'm gonna give you the form sheet here that'll help you guys out when it talks about fundamentals of form since we're talking about that today. Um, so make sure you grab these guys. These are free to grab. Thank you again to everybody who gifted subs and everybody who subscribed today. You guys are incredible. Um, it, it does help my streams out a lot. And I know that it helps, it helps the art community out here, um, by, you know, getting more access to educational content. So here's the, here's the new sheet guys. Grab these. These are only going to be available while I'm live on stream. So make sure you get them now because they will be gone by the end of my stream. Okay. But thank you so much for that, for that 10 gifted. Sheesh. Huge, huge 10 gifted there. Um, I have to remember to do this um, stream nomination thing. That's super cool. I got to nominate some other people as well. Very awesome. Um, but thank you. Thank you again. And let's do... Let's go back in here. Let's talk about the exploded neck, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the exploded neck here and how the um how the anatomy of the neck will work all right so i'm gonna go like this and i'm gonna just wrap it around here thank you for the prime sub as well infinite loki appreciate that um you guys are awesome appreciate that today all right so let's talk about necks and how the anatomy works all right so here is what i'm doing i'm going to lay out a few of the muscle groups here that i think are going to be important uh, with the first one here being the sternocleidoid mastoid, sternocleidomastoid, and that's going to be a muscle right here that basically um, connects from the back of the ear right here, kind of like this. Okay, and that's going to basically wrap all the way down here. It's also going to fan out a little bit, but it's going to make that connection to the uh, portion there of the neck. Uh, of the clavicle down here and you'll see that on both sides actually so it kind of does a kind of a cool wrapping thing like that um, and then the other portion here is going to be known as the trachea which you guys may or may not know about it's also called the um, the Adam's Adam's apple so it splits off here into two parts as it goes down here to the clavicle uh, but we're not drawing the clavicle there now the other portion here there's going to be a few other muscles that are going to be kind of going on there but i would say the main ones to pay attention to are really just going to be the trap muscles on the back side right here um, that's going to kind of fan out and connect to the portion of the head um, of the torso as well and then there's going to be a few random muscles that we don't care about so the main ones really are going to be the um the sternocleidio, this one right here, the trap muscles on the back, and um, last but not least, the trachea um, right there. But yeah, there you go. That's going to be the neck muscles and how to kind of connect that. So if you move this back up like that, we're basically filling that in. Um, right there. So it looks kind of gross, but I don't know. I don't know why I did it this way. I wanted just to explode his neck. I was in the mood. We go like this. There you go. Chopping out the neck there. Um, but yeah, so we kind of have that portion there. And so you can kind of imagine how these components work together and they connect for the rest of the body. Um, and so the way that I like to think about it is, again, these these forms, they all connect with each other, right? So the head connects with the neck, the neck connects with the torso. And so if you guys are ever struggling with figuring out what the heck is going on with the um, with these forms and, and how to actually put them together, I think a very important and valuable thing is to just recognize how these things are connecting and then from there being able to um, being able to kind of place that all in so let's kind of call out a few of the muscles again so we have here the traps trapezius uh, we have here the sternocleidoid sterno uh, 
I forgot if it's spelled Clyde, Clydeo, Sternocleidio. Let me look it up real quick. How to spell it? Sternocleidomastoid. Yeah, such a weird mastoid, also known as SCM. And then here we have uh, the trachea plus intrinsic muscles. Okay. Did I spell it wrong? Mastoid? I think it's... No, I spelled it right. Mastoid. Yeah, that one's, that one's right. There's no E after the mast, which is weird. Um, thank you for the follows, by the way. Saltiest Bun, Hydra, uh, Hydra Editor, and thank you for the Prime Sub Infinity Loki and everybody else who's coming in here. Guys, if it is your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, character design, and all that. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. So if you guys are interested in some free art education or you're just looking for some uh, some streamer to watch on a Thursday, do leave a follow, join in, and I hope you guys enjoy today's stream. Um, yeah, that's so weird, huh? I mean, I would just use the SEM. <laughs> you don't got to remember all the names and stuff. That's just so much work. So much, so much work to remember all of that. But okay, so this is basically the structure there of the head. We talked about male versus female differences. I think we might actually, so I'm not going to go and draw out the hair because I think we're okay. I think this is fine um, for the structure, right? Are you guys, are you guys good with this? Let me see here. Duplicate, multiply, uh, 40%. Okay, so we did hear the head. So I'm thinking um, the last thing I want to do now is I don't want to forget about this one. So we're going to do, I'm going to move this one here. Okay, we've, we've been drawing so many heads today. Uh, these are all the things that we've talked about today. We went over uh, differences between male and female, uh, anatomy of the neck, anatomy of the head, how to insert the head, um, how to insert the head in the neck. Let me think. Um, some other tips to watch out for, by the way, let me, let me, let me go bring this back here, but other things to watch out for is that you want to make sure when you're drawing the neck, um, keep in mind here that the neck is not straight. Um, it's not going to be a straight line like, like this. Let me show you. Don't do this. Okay. Right. Don't do that because basically you're missing out on a lot of the forms here. But I see this all the time uh, with a lot of beginner artists. When you draw the neck, you draw the neck like this, and then you draw the head kind of like this for like the shoulder or something like what? So keep that in mind. The, the head, the neck is not just like a straight tube that goes vertical. So, um, not, I'll write that down. Uh, not a straight uh vertical vertical tube so when you draw the neck one of the things you want to keep in mind here is again taper there's a little bit of a taper a little bit of an angle um let me let me do it like this taper angle uh what else and then curve so when you're drawing the neck make sure you have a little bit of these things right so here notice how there's an angle here there's a slight curvature on the neck here uh, and then you're having that taper because it kind of goes thick tapers back down and then it opens back out um for that but if you only draw like the neck like a tube like this you're going to end up with a very um kind of rough transition from your neck to your shoulder and you don't want to have that rough transition now again there are going to be different styles right so you can obviously stylize these things but i think in general if you want to draw a structure for the for the human body that feels 
like it's matching up there quite nicely with the actual structure of the human, uh, the proportions and all that stuff. You want to make sure you're not just going in here with like a straight tube. So let me go ahead and move. I'm going to make some room really quick because there's so much drawing that we've done today. I'm going to take this one and kind of shrink this one down here. Uh, and I'm going to take this one here and move that down here somewhere like that. I have so many notes. Okay, there you go. Maybe like this. Uh, but yeah, hopefully these notes, um, hopefully these notes so far are helpful. Let me know. Um, yeah, if it's a cartoon, I think the straight neck is not that big of an issue that I agree. But here's the thing, even in cartoons and stylized stuff, um, knowing that there is a nice transition and gradient from the head and the neck is going to actually be a very important thing. Right. And so, you know, sometimes when I was younger, when someone said, Hey, you should learn a little bit of the anatomy. It might help you out. And my answer was me being stubborn. And I would say, this is my style. I only draw the cartoon style. I don't need to learn anatomy, right? The problem with that is that there's a misconception that if you draw cartoon style, that you don't know the anatomy or that you don't need to know the anatomy, but by knowing the anatomy and having those things, it'll actually help you, um, be able to one stylize it further. And two, be able to draw it in many different angles in many different ways, right? Um, so yeah, that's just what I would say. Uh, let's see here. Are you going to post this anywhere, uh, at least in the VOD? Yeah, so these are going to be on YouTube, actually. So you can guys can check all of these out on YouTube uh, when, when I'm uploading them. But we're actually going to do the final head here, which is uh, arguably, I think, the hardest head but we're going to do it today with together because I think it's, um, I think it's very important to talk about this one, even though this is a, this one's going to be a rough one for sure. We're going to be working on this head tilt. Okay. Now, how many of you guys in the chat have ever struggled with drawing this angle of the head? You know what I'm talking about? Put an F in the chat, guys. If you've ever tried to draw the head looking up like this and you're just like, man, what the heck is going on? Why is it not looking right? Why does it not feel like it makes sense? Okay. If you've ever had this issue, we're going to go over it today. All right. And I'm also going to go and we're going to utilize all the things we've covered so far. We're going to go utilize the structure of the head that we've used. We're going to go over the neck that we just used and we're going to piece it all together to make sure that it, um, you know, looks good. All right. So I already kind of did a rough sketch for this one because I wanted to make sure I got started on this one and not spend too much time. But let's kind of go ahead now and let's talk a little bit about the structure of the head first before we even jump into talking about all of the details and stuff that we're going in here with. So again, I'm going to start working out the general forms of the head and you can use anything, right? You can use the box structure that we talked about earlier. You can use that round structure that we, um, that we talked about earlier. And that's actually what I'm going to utilize right now is I'm going to use a combination here of general kind of round shapes and establishing some of the 3d forms of the of this character or this reference here and so you can kind of see here all i'm doing is i'm mapping out a general face and you know again this is maybe reminiscent of the loomis style but i think it's also just reminiscent of um just understanding form so this is again just how i um how i generally approach drawing um drawing faces and stuff and i always try to you know visualize some sort of 3d shape that kind of goes with it uh thank you for the follows by the way ultra cakes appreciate the follows and welcome into uh welcome into the case and crew today so we have here the structure of the face um like so 
let's kind of go in maybe liquefy a few things just kind of get some of the proportions in there uh, and then let me go in and now let's kind of lay out the um, let's lay out the actual anatomy of the neck and we'll talk about what's going on there underneath okay so this is gonna be a little a little fun part here but basically when we're talking about the neck um, and especially when you're drawing a neck at this angle there's going to be a few things that are going to be important. Um, the first one is going to be the uh, the jaw. So we have here the the mandible, right? So we've talked about that in the in the skeletal stuff here. Um, but the other thing here that's going to be important is actually I think it's called the hyphoid process. Let me let me double check if I have uh, if I can look this up real quick. Yeah, so there's uh, there's this thing called the hyphoid bone, and it goes underneath the jaw, and it's basically kind of where that. Uh, where the Adam's apple and stuff is. And so when you're drawing a head, you can think of it as two separate components. You can think of it as the jaw um, that we have here. And there's going to be the underside of that jaw bone here, that, that maxilla, right? Or sorry, the mandible. Uh, then there's going to be that jaw muscle, right? And this jaw muscle is basically going to insert and connect itself all the way uh, and wrap around kind of this, uh, this other bone here called the hyphoid bone. Now, you can't really see it too much with her, but you can kind of imagine it's right here. Now, again, you might be wondering, Case, and why do I have to know all these, these names and stuff? You don't technically have to, uh, but as I always say, the more you know, the better off you'll be because what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to abstract away uh, some of these forms here. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to imagine all of the muscles of the jaw that connects here from the jawline, and they're going to get funneled into this tube. Uh, you can imagine this tube right here. They're all the muscles are going to get funneled in there like this. Shoop, shoop, shoop. Okay. And they're going to taper. They're going to create some of the taper there of the head. Now on the back side of the ears on the side, what are we going to do? We're going to add that sternocleidomastoid mastoid there. And that's going to be what this section of that muscle that we had earlier uh, that we talked about. Right. So we're going to add that in now too. Um, by the way, we... <laughs> We just got a bunch of follows just now. Uh, welcome in everybody who's coming in here. Sen Wu, Bull Crepe, Danny Health, our anime, Marina T. Are you guys bots? I don't know. I'm a, I'm a little, there's a little, there's a lot of follows out here. Uh, oh, welcome in. Let me, let me, okay, here's what we're going to do. I want to do a quick bot check, okay? I'm going to type, I'm a bot in the chat, all right? I want you guys to type, I'm a bot in the chat. We're going to do a quick bot check here because statistically speaking, when we get a lot of follows on my stream, there might be a good chance that one of you might be a bot out here. So I want you guys to type, I'm a bot in the chat. And the last person to type, I'm a bot in the chat, you might just be a bot. All right. And the reason why we're going to do this check is because if you are a real bot, real bots won't be able to type, I'm a bot in the chat. It's just against the algorithm. They can't do it. It's impossible. Um, but look, we keep getting, we keep getting follows. By Chansey, um, we got one from Chi Gao. We got another one from Noel Doreen. What's going on today? All right, but let me let me let me go through here. Okay, scrolling here, perfect, perfect. Scrolling through, uh huh. Good. I'm a bot. Your mama's a bot. Okay, I'm a bot. Perfect. Okay, cool. So I'm just gonna screenshot all of this, guys. I'm gonna send it over to Twitch later today. Um, expect your accounts to get banned if you typed "I'm a bot." Easy peasy, cleaning up the bots out here. <laughs> I'm kidding, by the way. Uh, welcome in everybody who's coming in here. Thank you so much for the uh, for all the follows and joining in today. Also, hey, how's it going, Fakir? Welcome back in. Let me give you a shout out. I saw you were streaming again. Glad to have you back on here. We need a. I need a. I need to hit you up for a little uh, potential collaboration. You know, with my fellow fellow art educators out here on streams. If you guys don't know who. Um, uh, Fakir here is. Um, they basically are a French streamer. French, right? Oh, maybe I'm crazy. I believe they're French. Um, and they're super cool. They make awesome art and they also teach art. So that's always nice. Um, but yes, anyways, guys, we're going to go back in here to talking about the structure of the neck here. So again, what makes it interesting here is once you've established some of the basic forms of the head, what we're going to do is we're going to lay down all the anatomy that we've talked about earlier. So we have here the sternocleidoid on this side right here. We're going to kind of just piece that out here, right? We're going to have those two connections of the tubes. We're going to do that on both sides like this. And you'll kind of start to see and understand what the heck is going on here with the actual anatomy, right? 
So we're going to have all of these components reaching out here and connecting to the neck. And then we have all of those tube things kind of going in from underneath the jaw and then kind of shrinking, shrinking in there. So let's go ahead and wrap this one out um, like so. And then we'll kind of piece that one out here. Uh, let me go ahead and go like this. And then here's what we're going to do. Okay. I'm going to take all of this and now you can kind of see and understand like, okay, this is the anatomy of the, of the neck that we got here. We got the, uh, the hyphoid process. We got here, the jaw, all of those things are kind of piecing together now and slowly and surely making the anatomy of the jaw. Now, when we actually draw this one out, obviously you're not going to have to add all those details and stuff. Um, you know, you don't have all those details, but I think it's good to kind of visualize these things because once you understand, and I'll, I'll highlight them really quick. Um, once you understand, I'll do it on a new layer. What happened to my palette? Mm, this one set as default. Okay. Once you understand what's going on here with this section, right? So this right here is the, uh, the jaw and this section right here is the so once you understand these sections, it'll kind of help you realize how that tapering is working. So again, you have here the, I believe this is called the hyphoid. Let me write this down. Hyphoid. Or hyoid. Sorry. I keep saying hyphoid. Um, hyoid bone, I think. Bone? Yeah. The bone. Uh, and then you have here the mandible, which is that jaw, right? Mandible. So the again, the muscles are going to kind of filter and kind of funnel their way into here like this. You see that? And so when we actually go ahead and draw this, uh, draw this out, like let's say in our style and stuff, um, you're going to see how that is going to play a big role. Okay. So let's go ahead and let's see if there's anything else I want to call out here. Let me, let me just lay out the, the other parts of this face here before we jump into the details. But hopefully that makes sense. Did, did that make sense for you guys? Let me know in the chat. Um, <laughs> if that made any sense, what I just talked about. Um, thank you for the follows today, by the way. I know I was trolling earlier about bots and stuff. I know you guys aren't bots, right? Uh, Dirtle, thank you for the follow. X Emerald, Flying Fluflalo. Uh, thank you for the sub. Miso, appreciate that. Miso Lavish, welcome back in. Great name as always. Um, Dax, welcome back. Welcome in. Thank you for the follows. And uh, Shy Boy Gaming as well. Um, is Chopper my favorite character? He's up there. He's up there in my like top five. Um, it'd be super cool. Don't have uh, that much time currently. Yeah, no worries. I don't got, I don't got too much time <laughs> either, but I'm sure we can figure something out eventually, uh, for sure. Out of curiosity, for those of you guys, um, for those of you guys who just found my stream today or following in and stuff, how did you guys come across my stream? Was it through recommended? Was it through the front page? Uh, was it through a raid that I just, I don't know, totally missed kind of thing? Let me know in the chat. I'm always curious to see how people come across my streams. Um, the algorithm, you know, was it, was it the algorithm showing you to me today? Okay. But anyways, anyways, let's kind of go in here. Um, so we have here the, the mandible, the hyoid bone and all of that stuff and all the, all the funneling that we talked about earlier. And remember, okay, so I should probably do this, but remember that all of these things are going to connect over to the clavicle. Um, her clavicle is really far down, so maybe I just won't draw that, but let me do, let me merge all this. Okay. So we'll do that, and then now I'll just draw here. Um, I'll show you guys kind of how I would draw this one now that I have all of those forms and stuff in mind, right? Recommended. Just click Filipino for some reason. Oh yeah. Shout out to my, um, yeah. Shout out to my fellow Filipino viewers in the chat. Welcome in. I think in general, even here's the thing. So I, I want you guys to know, even if you guys are, you know, you, you learned all this and stuff. And if you're like, Hey Sam, I, I, I get it, but I'm still struggling. Just know that that's completely fine because this is generally pretty hard to do. Um, by the way, guys, I do run ads on my stream every hour and one's going to be running right about now. So if you do get an ad, thank you again for sticking around for the ad break. 
Uh, they help keep my streams monetarily viable and allow me to do what I'm doing out here on Twitch. So uh, with that being said, thank you. And I hope to see you after the ad break. You randomly just pick someone from the art page. You just like spun a wheel. Okay. Thanks guys. Appreciate the, uh, appreciate the follows today. Sheesh. But yeah, I would say, you know, don't feel bad. If you feel like this is something you're struggling with, this is generally a really hard angle. I would say this is probably one of the harder angles to do whenever like at work, if I'm doing like, if I'm doing angle like this at studio, oh my God dude i'm just like why do you do this to me and they're like hey we need you to draw we need you to draw so-and-so character from this angle and i'm like oh. and then when they tell you to animate it oh oh my gosh thank you so much ling bao oh they appreciate that two months um no worries caroline yeah the worst is when they tell me to animate this one and i'm like please don't make me think about animating this and that's when it's like rough Luckily, though, I don't get too many faces of this angle. Um, I mean, sometimes we do. For sure, we do, but... Um, hey, thank you for the follows. JX Era. Um, and Sticks B and everybody else. But yeah, guys, welcome in to the KSM crew. If you guys have any questions, by the way, feel free to ask them in the chat. Um... You know, I always try to do my best to answer as many questions as I can. So if you have any questions, feel free to ask and yeah, welcome in. You explain better and more in depth than 90% of YouTube tutorials. I, I mean, here's the thing. I mean, that might be true, but also you got to consider most YouTube videos are only like 10 minutes long. I stream for like three hours. And so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely going to cover more in three hours than like a 10 minute YouTube video. Um, but also, you know, I think a lot of the stuff I teach and stuff is stuff that either I've learned myself, stuff that I've learned from books or stuff that I've actually learned from art school. And I'm just reteaching it out here to you guys, because I understand that sometimes it's difficult to get access to books and online classes and all that. Um, and so I want to try to help out as much as I can by giving out, you know, all the things that I've learned in my time and journey as an artist and stuff. Um, could you show the roughing out process beneath the stuff you were doing today? Oh, you mean these things? Yeah, I mean, it literally was just me doing this. <laughs> the rough that I did that you're seeing underneath, it's just literally me just doing a quick rough. Um, it's not that hard. Oh, okay. That's a lie. But it's just this. I go in here. I establish the forms. I'll do it right now. Um, I establish that center line. I find where I want the eye level to be. I bring that back here bring the ears in like that. Let's find that jaw. Where do I want my proportions to land? Um, finding that, that zygomatic cheekbone area like that. Boom, boom, boom. Jawline like that. And then that's it. That's all I'm doing. And then I'm going in here and I'm finding some of the volume, finding the pieces here, but you know, it's a little messy. So I usually just don't show it. Cause I think it, you know, takes up a lot of the the time that I don't think is super important. Um, but this is kind of what I do. And then from here, I'll clean it up obviously. And, you know, fix up some of the adjustments, make sure it looks a little cleaner. You already drew 10 faces and none of them are close to these. And that's not bad. Um, that's not bad. I think, I think, you know, it's, it's, it's practice, right? I think I, we, we've talked about this a lot before, but how many of you guys in the chat have had that problem before where let's say you're like, hmm, I want to learn how to draw something. Like I feel like I've been plateauing with my art and then you try to do something new, but the moment that it starts to look bad, you're kind of like, oh, this is trash. I give up, right? How many of you guys have been in that situation before? Put an F in the chat. If let's say you're, you're really into drawing anime waifus and the moment you're like, hmm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try to draw some male characters today. And then you start drawing some male characters. They look really bad. And you're just like, okay, let me go back. Let me go back to drawing my women, the big boobas, <laughs> which by the way, there's nothing wrong. There's nothing wrong with doing that. I'm just saying, I think it's sometimes we're too harsh on ourselves, right? Sometimes we're too critical of ourselves and don't give ourselves the opportunity to really grow and develop our skills, which oftentimes is not something that happens quickly. Sometimes you have to, you know, Sometimes it does take a little bit of patience and stuff. You heard the boobas, you're like, ah, 
Boobas? <laughs> you guys are funny. Um, by the way, if it's your first time here, welcome into the KSM crew. My name is KSM. I am a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy to gesture to perspective to uh, hair design to basically everything related to character design. I also work uh, full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Um, and right now I'm prepping uh, to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, Invincible, and all of that stuff. So if you guys are interested in some free art education, uh, you guys are just looking for a stream to watch on a Thursday, or you're just hanging out with my dog who's over there looking, looking away from the camera, um, do leave a follow, join in, and I hope you guys, um, I hope you guys enjoyed today's stream. Um, have I ever dabbled in webtoons? I have, and it's very hard. <laughs> it's very hard. I don't envy people who work on web, web comics and stuff. Shout out to all my friends who do. Nah, it's, it's, it's difficult, 100%. Um, I have a problem with making drawing noses. Either I make a front view or a side view, but almost never both because I can't figure out what it looks like in the other perspective once I make it. Do you have any tips? Um, I, I would say the tip I would give is to honestly l simplify the shape of the nose first, because sometimes I feel like we get too, you know, we get too eager with trying to draw all the details, but I would, you know, simplify the nose to a, a triangular shape like this, right? Or, or I've seen artists do a round shape like this for the button of the nose and, and do that. It's really up to you. But I would say um, simplify the shapes first. Get comfortable with understanding this. Because if you can do this, if you can move this little box around in different angles, right? If you can do that, you're basically one step away um, from turning this into into a fully de detailed nose, right? So practice with that first. Get comfortable with that. And then you can kind of go in, okay, okay, cool. I want to go like this. I want to give it a bridge. I want to give it a little bit of a wing, right? Something like that. Or if you want to go for a more anime style, okay, let's kind of take that. Maybe let's go this way. Maybe let's go like this, add a little bit of a line there for the, for the side of the nose, add a little bit of a line, anime style nose. You get what I'm saying? Um, but it all starts with breaking down the simple forms. And then from those simple forms, pushing out a little bit more of the detail. Um, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Let me know. If, let me know if that was helpful at all. Do a little bridge, make a little nose, sing a little song, making noses are, aren't that hard. Yeah. Uh, being a perfectionist is the biggest enemy in drawing. I think so. I think being a perfectionist can be very much detrimental to, to your growth as an artist. Like, I think, I think it's a balance of wanting to make good work, right? Uh, but then feeling like everything you have to make is has to be good. I think it's two are two different things. Okay. Uh, but also guys, if you have any questions in the chat, feel free to ask them. Um, I try to you know, answer as many questions as I can, whether it's questions about what we're doing right now, or if you have questions about me and you're like, Hey, I'm kind of curious to, to see what you're up to. Like, you know, I don't know. I used to be a software engineer for some reason. People, people are curious about that life, <laughs> about my software engineering days. Feel free to ask questions. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't change the color. Okay. Sorry. There you go. Um, how old were you when you started in the art industry? Uh, pretty old. I guess not super old, but like 
I'm not young. I'll say that much. I mean, I was a, here here for contacts. I'm not going to give you guys my age. I'm somewhere between the range of uh, 21 and 65. But I was just for context. I was in the I was a software engineer for five years in the industry before I started working as an artist. Okay, so I'm not a I'm not a spring chicken. I'll say that much. I've definitely um. I've definitely been working for a bit of time prior to um prior to to pivoting and then working as a working as an artist in the in the animation industry. Um Hey, do you make as much as you did as a software engineer? Uh no. And and a big part of that also you got to consider is one the tech industry is definitely more inflated. Um but two after you work five years in the industry, you're basically considered like a senior, you know, like a senior level engineer. Whereas right now in the animation industry, I'm still kind of like entry ish level. Um, so I'm working my way up, but I think in general, just industry wise, uh, the tech industry usually does pay a little bit more on average than the art industry does. Um, not to say that you can't make good money. You can't make good money in the animation industry. It's definitely possible. Uh, but that is why I also stream on Twitch and stuff because streaming on Twitch actually um, is like my second job, you could say, in, in, in some ways, in some capacities. Teaching out here on Twitch is pretty, pretty fun and rewarding. So yeah, just look at my channel points. Yeah, right. If only... If only channel points were a true, a true measure. Um, let me see here. You just saw my art on Instagram. It's so good. Thank you, Ash. Yeah, I have an Instagram. If you guys want to check me out on IG, um, I also have a YouTube channel as well, which I'm trying to be more proactive with. Um, you'll be seeing more videos starting on Saturday, I believe. But yeah, again, this is a really hard angle, so don't feel bad if you're like, man, KSM, I'm struggling with this one. I have no clue why it's looking off. I think that's completely fine. It's again, it's a not it's not a normal angle and one that I think definitely sometimes you kind of just have to trust trust it to look okay. <laughs> you just have to cross your fingers a little bit, you know? Um Aim. I'm a seven year old JavaScript engineer, but the industry kind of sucks. I'd rather do what I love and make less than make what I do now and, and kind of be miserable. hundred percent. I agree with that a hundred percent. And that was my mentality when I decided to quit as well. I was like, you know what? Like, is this really what my life is going to amount to? Just going into the office every day, doing stuff that I don't really care about, that I'm not excited about. People keep telling me in the company that I'm, I'm leaving a big impact and that I'm, you know, and all this and that, but I don't feel like I'm really happy with where I'm at. You know, I don't feel like I'm satisfied and I don't want to be doing this for the rest of my life. You know, like what's the point of, what's the point of making money if, if you're not happy with where you are and, and what you're doing? So I was like, I'm going to quit and I'm going to do what I want to do instead. And hopefully it works out. And thankfully it did work out for me. Um, which by the way, I'm not telling you guys to just go and quit your jobs, right? I'm not just being like, Hey, all right, random, random, uh, content creator on the internet says, go quit your job today. You know, <laughs> don't, don't, don't come back to me next week and be like, yo, I quit my job. I lost my home. My, uh, my kids left me, my, my spouse left me. What happened? You said, you said I'd be successful. You know, I'm like, Hey, hey I didn't say any of that. What the heck? Yeah, uh, you just don't take take, you know, take take my advice with a grain of salt. I guess is what I'm trying to say. Uh, thank you for all the follows, by the way. What if, uh, but what if you're making towards building happiness? For who? Right, because I think I think it depends, and I think also like, I think you can you can build happiness in so many different ways. So for my take, my my thought was if I'm going to do that, might as well do it in the ways that I want to do, which is by uh, teaching on Twitch, right? 
I like to, I like to do all that and stuff. All you're saying, but what if making money is, is building happiness and that's fine. I mean, there, I like, here's the thing. I like making money. I like having a business, you know, that's why I do what I do. But if I'm going to be making money and putting the effort in, I'd rather do it in my own terms and do it in, in something that I actually care about and I'm passionate about, um, you know, but again, that's just me. Um, not everyone has to follow, um, that, that path. And I think there are some people who I've met who, who say that, Hey, you know what? I actually like my nine to five job. I'm completely fine with it. And I want to do art on the side. You know, I want to do it as a little bit of a side gig. And I like having the stability of a nine to five job while I do my art. And I think that's completely fine. I know there's some of you right now in the chat who are, who are in that situation and you're completely fine with that situation. You know, it's a great, it's a good situation to be in. You're not super stressed. You're enjoying your regular, you know, routine. If that, if that works for you, then I don't think there's no reason. I don't think there's a reason to have to quit and, and pursue art full time. If you're content with doing it as a, a side thing, like as a, either as a hobby or as a part-time gig, right? Um, doesn't go well for most. I think so. I think, I think that, um, if you're, if your only goal in life is to make money, you know, and it's like, how do I make money the fastest and stuff? I don't know. I feel like it's, it's doable and I, I've been there, but I've come to realize that life is short and there's, there's more things I'd rather do and enjoy. Uh, there's money of value in your happiness and your ability to enjoy your work day with, uh, without it detracting from your life. Just figure out how much that value is worth to you so you can, can still make more money from being miserable. But I wouldn't recommend it long term. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like what Yoku, you know, Yoku Gray is saying, like, I think there are ways to be strategic about it. Um, you know, and there are ways to like, yeah, you know, do, do your day to day job and all of that stuff. And then if you have time, you want to do your art stuff on the side, right? But anyways, um, this is going to be the head here at this angle. Uh, let me just lay out some hair really quick just to kind of give it some volume, you know. Uh, but yeah, this is basically how I tackle drawing, uh, drawing heads from this angle. It's a pretty interesting angle, I think. But once you kind of start establishing some of that structure, some of that volume and stuff, I think it does become a little bit easier, right? It, it allows you to kind of start seeing, um, seeing the forms a little bit more. And then you, and then it becomes a little bit less scary when you come, when you actually go in and tackle, uh, tackle drawing the head at this angle. And now you're not as like confused about like, Hey, what the heck is going on here? Uh, what's all the, the form and the anatomy. Cause now you're like, okay, there's a, there's the jaw here, right? The jaw tapers down and funnels into this hyoid bone. Uh, and then from that bone, you know, you can add in between on the sides there, you can add the um, the sternocladiomastioid, right? All of that stuff here. So we did a lot today, I would say. Definitely a lot of tutorial stuff. I hope you guys enjoyed all of it. It's, again, a little different from what we've been doing in the past uh, two weeks. Because I think in the past two weeks, I've been showing you guys more like how to draw expressions and fun stuff like that. So we've done all these character expressions that I've drawn uh, for Joel and Ellie from The Last of Us. And then now... We're like, okay, let's bring it back to the technical, right? Let's talk about anatomy. Let's talk about proportions. Let's talk about form, um, angles. And so we'll be doing a bit of both of that. Um, always a bit of both of mixing, you know, mixing in the technical and the more of the creative looser side of things too. Um, thanks for hanging out here. Appreciate that. Um, see you soon. What a nice thing to say. I need to start saying that more instead of saying bye see you soon. <laughs> it just implies, it's just such a cool, cool way to say it. Um, time check. Yeah, we'll be, we'll be, don't worry. We're good on time. Uh, art is a difficult field to get into. I got lucky as far as getting into graphic web design. It's a lot of hard work. Yeah. You know, and it's crazy because I remember when I was in high school and I chatted with my college counselor in high school. And when I told her I wanted to be an artist and she basically said like, yeah, if you be an artist, you're going to waste your intellect. And I, I was just so like shocked by that because I think that's how a lot of people think the art industry is or being an artist is like being an artist means that you're, you're not smart and that you're doing an easy job. You're just doodling or something. But 
honestly, there's so much that goes into art. Like all the stuff that we talk about anatomy and all of this, like I would say in terms of just knowing the anatomy, I probably know a good amount as maybe a medical student. Maybe, maybe if a medical student right now wants to come in and test me, let's do it. I like, there's so many things that you can learn and, and sometimes have to learn as an artist that I feel like trivializing it and saying it's an easy job or saying that it's not it's not hard work because you're doing something fun like drawing i don't know it, it baffles my mind when when people say stuff like that because it's like if you've ever done it you know uh will this be on youtube yes this will be on youtube uh make sure to follow me and subscribe over there on youtube guys i'll be uploading videos pretty soon actually um on my youtube channel so starting i think this saturday you'll be seeing a lot more videos on there. Hopefully somewhere between two to four videos a week um, on my YouTube channel. I'm trying to be more proactive on social media and stuff because, you know, content creating and, and whatnot. It is what it is out here in the world of content creating. Um, but yeah, I'm just going in right now and I'm just breaking up the hair. You can kind of see how I'm just chopping up these forms. And then from these generalized, uh, structures of hair, we're going to go in and obviously, you know, add more details and stuff. Um, tell that to Leonardo da Vinci. Wait, what, which one? Um, yeah, Leonardo da Vinci. Exactly. Yeah, you're like a doctor, you're a physicist, you have to be like creative as well. You got to be a film director sometimes. Like if you're doing like storyboards and stuff, you basically have to like, you know, know about good camera angles, uh timing. It can be it can be a lot to to learn a lot of technical things that people don't realize cuz they just think like, "Oh, yeah, drawing is uh what kids used to do back in back in middle school when they would draw and make doodles of faces." while they're while they're in class right and there's some parts of that for sure there's some parts of that doodling and that you know creative aspect but i definitely think there's there's so much technical thing that goes into really being a good artist um but okay i would say this is pretty solid here for just that quick demo i'm not going to go too much into adding in all the details for the hair because we've we can go we can do a lot right we can do a lot with this one and i'll show you guys a demo of what uh what that looks like if i were to add a bunch of hair and details so here's that example that we did earlier um with this girl actually let me put this reference away now so we did a lot of drawing today. We did all of this today. We covered proportions. We covered the skeletal anatomy. We covered general forms. We covered the neck anatomy, differences between male and female heads. Uh, we talked about drawing heads at, a, at, at this angle. I would say this is a pretty hefty, hefty stream. We did so much. It's kind of crazy. Um, let me know if this was helpful to you guys today because, um, you know, I'm trying to do my best out here. And you'll, you'll be seeing a lot more content like this one for sure, uh, moving forward, but we'll still mix it up. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll try to mix it up and we'll do some fun stuff as well too. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Quick stretch. But yeah, welcome in everyone who's coming in here for the first time. My name is KSM. I'm a Filipino art streamer here on Twitch. I teach everything from anatomy, gesture, perspective, character design, and all of that stuff. And I also work full time in the animation industry for the studio that made Castlevania. Uh, currently prepping right now to work as a character designer for shows like Castlevania, Legend of Korra, and Invincible. So if you guys haven't followed my stream yet, make sure you follow that. Subscribe on YouTube. Uh, yeah, join in. Welcome into the KSM crew. But with that being said, um, let's go wrap this one up.